Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NECC quarterfinals. We got some playoff action for you, but first, I need to introduce this legend over here, Zach Tech. How are we doing, brother? I am doing fantastic. Absolutely pleased to be here. It's going to be a fantastic matchup. An absolute pleasure to cast with you, Hot Sauce. First time together. I'm sure it's going to be an absolute banger today. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. I mean, both these teams, you know, honestly, uh, Onyx is the higher seed team, the number three seed, but Hawking Hills, as you had mentioned, we kind of talked briefly before getting in here. They met in week seven, and it was actually Hawking Hills who came out on top. Yeah, going all the way to game five. Don't know if it was a reverse sweep or it was a back and forth, but either way, the fact that these teams took it all the way to the fifth game means that I feel like today it could go either direction. Either of these teams could step up. They are both five and three, similar records, so... Honestly, I have no particular leanings either direction. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Like we mentioned, Onyx, that the higher C, but again, Hawking Hills beating them just a couple weeks ago as well in week seven. So certainly probably feeling some of that confidence as they get out onto the field. Uh, I know we got some rosters to look at here, and then uh, hopefully we'll get out on the pitch. Absolutely. Up first, OWU Esports. We've got Tyga, an economics freshman. Zem Ghost, a business freshman, and KW, an undecided freshman. Of course, lots of freshmen here coming in, the fresh blood, the fresh talent, uh, coming in with some good ideas. When I come straight off of the high school, you know, people say that the younger you are, the more better uh, mechanics you might have, uh, reflexes. So maybe we'll see that today. And uh, some very interesting, very smart uh, kids here. Well, not kids, freshmen, college. But uh, very excited to see what this team comes out with. And very excited to see what this next lineup is as well. All right, there it is for the Hawking College Hawks here in goal. We have Just Mo 12 in music production, a freshman as well, the real Logan, Associates of Science, a sophomore, and Grim Jow, Wild Resource Management, a sophomore as well. And I, again, I know we were talking briefly, you're a, a music in music production as well, so maybe a, a little bit of favoritism there. Perhaps just a little bit, uh, you know. True to my heart, music production. You know, really knowing the uh, tech and the musical artistic side of it. But we're going to see if they can bring some of these skills to the field and really make it happen here. Now, of course, like we said before, it went to game five against these two teams. And uh, if my record on NEC is anything to go by, uh, the majority of games I have casted here have been reverse sweeps. So really, I feel like this could go either direction. And whoever goes up to first uh, might be uh, one to watch out. Yeah, you know, I feel like more often than not, a lot of times these first games can be a little sporadic. So I really look for that second game to kind of tell me how, how it's going to play out, if we might see a best of five and things. But yeah, I, I want to, I'm, what I'm looking for basically is who's that more aggressive team, who's getting to the ball quicker, having that field domination as well. Uh, you, you always want to come out early and try to put that first one on the board when, you, when you're in these crazy playoff games. That first goal can be so important for morale for the team. And really sort of like, hey, we can do this. We can get past this defense and make something happen here. You know, we've got 5 or 10 o'clock. Game one is here to go, and we have kick -off. All right, back and forth across midfield. Just Mo looking to carry it toward the net. The defense here, and they will carry out. Kind of double committing then a bit there, but doesn't come to haunt him here. Tyga fires one. The defense is there, and now booming back and forth as we thought. Kind of some wild sporadic plays here early in the first 20 seconds. So that movement out of Tyga, though, the patience to wait for the bounce to pop over a player. Something I really like to see here in these early games. A lot of people coming out in the first game want to rush, want to play fast and hard and score early. But the fact that Tyga is showing that patience and that power is something I think is going to be a good sign that they are in calm, controlled form. And they got some good shots here going into the first minute of the game. Yeah, they've been pretty relentless with shot after shot, the double touch, and Tyga will find the first goal. 50 not even off the clock, and they are here to make a point. A beautiful job rotating all the way back around to get it just in that bottom left corner. The defender was there, but he wasn't ready to get all for him to get all the way around that ball and redirect it back in. First goal over at OWU. That could spell some good signs for them. Like I was saying, the patience and the control here. A excellent job. The Tiger goes for the flip reset. Another shot, but it is blocked away. Yeah, Tiger is certainly showing some good mechanical skills here. Hawking has been on defense. They need to try to find some pressure out of their side of the field. Zimgo's firing in here as they look to find the defense. A lot of second and third chance opportunities so far 
for OWU, and we just we need to see maybe some more bumps, some demos to help create or alleviate some space for Hawking and see if they can find this equalizer here soon. A little space here to work as him goes passing it to Tiger. He's going to shoot to the far corner off the post. Ooh, that is tough. The shot was there, but Maste going to put it in top left corner. The nice little soft lob shot. Yeah, again, just relentless on these shots. We see second and third chance opportunities, just shot after shot, and it's only a matter of time before they fall. Maystay will find this one, and OW Onyx will find themselves up by two with 3.30 left on the clock. Nervous now passing it out. I love to see these passes here, the connections being made by OWU. It's so important, being able to be in sync with your team had that synergy going through the first match is a great sign that this team has open communication, open signals, and that they are firing on all cylinders as a team. Now, yeah, oh, and just like that, Mace Tay will get another one. So they'll be chasing that hat trick here as well now. And again, uh, you know, we talked about how uh, Hawking had beat OWU previously in week seven. OWU has fired up three early ones here. Plenty of Rocket League left to be played, but certainly OWU putting on a showcase here in game number one. Yeah, maybe they thought, hey, that first matchup, you know, a bit of a fluke. You know, we sort of handed it over to you, so now we're going to prove that we were the better team, that we have this third seed for a reason. We're here to fight for it and to prove that we are here to take these playoffs all the way to the end, get to the grand finals. We're going to prove it starting here in the quarterfinals. All right. Well, we'll see if they can maintain this lead as we near the halfway point. Taiga on the aggressive attack yet again. The defense here looks to carry off the wall and just Mo carries that one out. The 50 will go in their favor. Grimjow on the back pedal passes backwards. Looks to carry this one out. Flips over and again. Kind of some midfield back and forth. Some booming clears. But it's really been OWU for the majority of the possession here in game number one. I'm loving the trust you're coming out of OWU. The ability to just blank it up, trust your teammate to go up for it. Here's something that Hawking needs to really pull together here. We've seen a lot of solo opportunities, solo shots and plays downfield, but not a lot of connections for the passing play. And then we see a double commit. It seems the communication is just not quite there yet in this first game, but we do have some time to bring it together as a team, some time to figure out where those communications need to happen, and how to pull it together. But uh, with only two minutes left and down 3-0, Hawking Gold might have to look the next game to pull together. Yeah, you know, and even if you don't win this game as Hawking Gold, you still want to come out and try to find a goal or two, trying to build some of that confidence, that momentum before you head into game number two. Uh, you know, when these guys met in week seven, it was actually OW that took game number one, five to three as well. Hawking was able to come back in game number two and answer one to nothing. So, I mean, maybe a similar situation being played out here in the playoffs. We'll have to wait and see. History repeat itself. We do have to wait and see here. As Ty got a shot opportunity, possibly through the back row and redirect it towards center. Anyone there for the shot? Not quite. Defense standing strong for Hawking Gold. Now, all three players in the box just waiting to get this ball away. It's going to be a miss there. Another shot opportunity, maybe. Sam goes to the back court off to the far side. Tyga now going to shadow Just Mo here. He's going to go downfield with the ball, but Tyga does take it away and keeps the danger away from his net. Yeah, and again, back on the attack, nearly carrying this one in, but a beautiful save coming in the way of Hawking College here as they look to press on the counterattack, knocking across midfield here, tapping at the goal, but not able to find anything. And again, the defense too good, a nice pass down midfield, high and dry, and I don't even know how that one didn't go in. Come on, a little play there. Just off the post, we saw a blue player there. Try to just tip it over the side, but a little too awkward there, but with three goals left, you got some time to let it bounce off to the side now. Giving up this pressure here to maintaining this offensive push is going to make sure that Hawking Gold cannot break out. If they can really close out here, OWU, 3-0, possibly 4-0, no, off to the side. And that could be very crushing for the spirits of Hawking Gold. Yeah, I mean, OWU has just had some really phenomenal passing plays. Mechanically in the air, they've pretty, been pretty sound and solid. It, honestly, the rotations have been on point. The third man as well, constantly keeping that ball down on that Hawking College side. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Hawking just did, couldn't find any space. They were, they were on defense so much. They really didn't get that many shots on goal as well. And OWU kind of dominating that first, uh, first game. Yeah, the MVP here. OWU, Tiger really coming out. Shrimp has those 
flipper sets, those mechanics, as well as some of those outplays, the passing to his team is really on point, and the facilitation there for OWU has been massive. Hawking Gold looking to try to put something together here for game number two, and maybe, you know, like last series against each other, it just takes some time to warm up for this team. Hawking Gold, you know, game number two, this is where they have to prove themselves, hey, we can stay in this series, we can play competitively, and we're not going to get swept, and we're not going to get shut out either. Yeah, you know, maybe just some of them first game jitters they need to get out of the way. So, yeah, again, we saw a couple double commits, some minor mistakes coming in the way of Hawking, uh, Hawking College Gold, and I think OW just capitalized on that. So they just kind of need to minimize on those simple mistakes, work on those rotations as well, just kind of make allowing them to keep that ball on that blue side there. But, again, we saw them, you know, in, the, in week seven lose game one. They came out one game two, one to nothing as well. So, uh, again, maybe they'll be able to do that here. They've been in this situation before, so most certainly they have to be comfortable still. Being shut out on that first game can be so demoralizing. Not being able to have any openings or being able to break down the defense in any such way. And really going into game two, be like, okay, well, where do we start? We don't have any leads right now. We got maybe a couple balls downfield, but nothing really got past those corners or anywhere really near that net. So they have to get creative. They're going to have to figure out a way around because currently these solo plays, these launches downfield, getting easily intercepted and turned around to themselves. So Hawking Gold has got to get creative here, get these passing plays going, and really find this way maybe off the backboard, use the space they're being given by OWU to really take this game number two. Yeah, I mean, like most sports, you know, it, it is a physical game, but it's also a mental game as well, and you can't let game ones like that affect you, even though they can from time to time. So they just need to take a deep breath uh, just kind of reset, get into their 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 style that they're used to playing in. They know they've beat this team in a best of five before. So again, that mental aspect is very important here. Just take a deep breath, reset. I certainly think that they can come out and win that game. Obviously, a tough start in game one, not the showing that they wanted. Uh, but that's why you make up for it in game number two, right? Game number two is the place to make it up and prove yourself really coming out. This is possibly the mental reset they need. They've got a minute now to figure it out have talk amongst each other, get the nerves down, get the jitters out. Game one, cool, it's out the window. We forget about it, we throw it behind us, we move on. And now we prove ourselves game two, we come back. We need some ferocity, some creativity, possibly some good speed. All right, out on the pitch for game number two, and Maste is going to take it away. Fires back, and already we have Maste with a score two seconds in, and we talked about how not scoring a single goal can be demoralizing. This equally can be as frustrating. Hawking College has got to get it together soon. So the defender, they get caught on the back line. Low boost, awkward positioning. That's not what you want to see here. A much better kickoff here. Some space now. Tiger going through the midfield. See the octane car change here. It's going to be a little more mechanical. But the flipper set doesn't quite come through. And it goes off to the side. Grim now. I'm going to play some help here. Tiger. Up, looking for a teammate. The flip reset will put it down and in the Sheesh. second goal put in by Tiger just under the crossbar. Yeah, just a flashy play after flashy play, and Tiger kind of showcasing the aerial control, the mechanical ability as well as Tiger finds another, and it is early chasing that hat trick already. I don't know what the lineup was for the last series with each other, but we do know that OW has a large list of players, I think nine, possibly playing throughout this season together. So maybe it was just Tyke who was not in that game, but maybe he's here to really prove himself, pull out some of these mechanics and show that, hey, look, I can really pull this team up, I can help them out, we can really play together, and we can prove right now that this is third seed material, possibly first seed, you know, and this offense right now going up 2-0 in the first minute is quite compelling. Yeah, you know, one thing I really like about this OWU team as well is after they find a shot or after they find a pass, they're looking for more. As they're rotating out, they're looking for that demo or that bump to help that teammate that they just passed to as well. So they're looking for that extra play after a play, and that's certainly what it takes to make a green uh, a team great. So play there for Tyga, almost swinging his all the way down the field. As you get past the last defender, it does Ooh. just mo able to put it in if you're getting demoed. Taking it downfield, the center there. Oh, defenders was pushed too far forward. OW got a little too comfortable on the offense there. Defender just couldn't pick it back to it. 
Yeah, I mean, that can happen when you're dominating and you have a lot of possession, maybe kind of cheating forward just a little too much. And, well, Hawking Gold did exactly what they need to do, make them pay for those minor mistakes. Now, one away from the equalizer. Plenty of time left in this game of Rocket League. We'll see if Hawking College Gold can fight to find one more. If OWU will be able to stop them and put them at match and series point. I'm off to the side here. Rebecca, though, will get the ball away. The center for OWU, but the defense does hit it away there off to the side. Quick follow up, but it's lost to Tyga. Tyga going to put it towards net, but the defense does get back. Now, looks like it's a bit of a scramble here on the defense. Try to get boost. Looks like they are low. Getting starved here. It's going to be tough to try to maintain this backline defense. Yeah, now on the counter attack, though, pushing in a hurry. Tiger's going to rotate across midfield. A dangerous pass, but nobody's there for Hawking, and will carry it off the wall. Now to the ceiling, looks to keep that arrow control. Fires one and the defense is there on a nice save from Hawking Gold. They need to find the counter attack here. Still plenty of time, though, as we near the halfway point. Only down by one is Hawking Gold. Oh, and seeing the awkward play there, the real Logan coming in to tap it over the last defender. Two, three players all caught in the exact same spot. He saw the mistake and he put it home, tying it up 2-2. Two, two. And Hawking Gold now back in the running for this game number two. Yeah, just so much time here, so now they have to feel comfortable, able to fight back anyone's game at this point. And again, almost a repeat of what happened earlier in the season. So we'll see if they can continue and power forward here. Tiger's going to get that one taken from him at midfield. The shot on goal, but the defense is still there. As Zimgos looks to find the clear, going to be fighting. Doesn't win the 50 here. And now the ball floating in a dangerous zone. Tiger will look to carry out over the head. And now the defense on the back pedal. Hawking able to get there in time, but they have to be careful about overcommitting here. Now going down, looking for the passing play here. It goes just a little too far forward, so no connection. Can get bounced center though off the wall, and now he's got space to work with. Two players down the midfield. Big flick goes up off the side while Tiger trying to get some control here. Them goes through the middle, but back to the orange player that goes to that top high. He's going to throw away possession. It means there's an opportunity here for a shot off the back foot. It goes. We will stay with the 2 2 score line. Yeah, Tiger looking to find the attack off the wall, passing to midfield here, but will be sought out. Zimgos looks to keep it alive. That third man rotation coming into play. Tiger with a dirty play here. That one's going to hit the early crossbar or the post, excuse me, as Mace Tay will keep this one alive again. We talked about how good OWU is at keeping possession down here on the Hawking side. And right now, they're just uh, really putting on a display of that. These orange players here. Hawking Gold needs to have some good ways to fall from these clears. They've got some decent plays to make it downfield. They're going to follow it up, maintain control, and that possession just gets thrown back to OWU. And the only way they've really been able to score is catching OWU too far forward or in the same spot. As that's a team bump, going to throw Tiger off of his shot. And that is rough. And luckily, a clean break for Hawking Gold here as that ball is going to stay away from the net. Yeah, they tried to go across midfield again here, nearly getting that one taken away. Tiger looking for the flip reset, the razzle dazzle, and Tiger will find another one to put OWU up on top with 48 seconds remaining. Oh, I've seen the said so many times, but Tiger here now turning it into a wave dash on the bottom to get under the last man. So they both went up. Beautiful drop to spot that hole in the defense and just slide it on in. 45 on the clock, plenty of time for Hawking to find this equalizer, but they got to keep it in gear here as OWU has been a great job, or doing a great job of keeping that possession on this Hawking side. Back and forth here, the booming clears as they wait to get this one settled again. The ball in front of Hawking's net, not the touch they needed as well. And again, sitting in a dangerous position, Zimghost is going to make them pay, and that's going to most likely be the nail in the coffin for game number two. All well, boosting caught all in the same spot. Hawking Goal was just sitting ducks right there for Zemkos to slot it in behind him. And that means that game number two is most likely going to go over to OWU. Not something you want to see for Hawking Gold here, but 25 seconds will give an opportunity. It is nigh impossible, but not improbable. Well, nigh improbable, but not impossible. There we go. <laughs> Two goals in 17 seconds, though. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, just not enough time on the clock, especially against this OWU team who's done a great job of keeping ball possession, boost consumption as well. We've seen them often starving, hawking from the boost. And again, just uh, the slightly better team here in game two. I like the improvements that Hawking College made here in game number two. Uh, but unfortunately, it just wasn't enough as OWU really 
just all over the field. They seem to have a little bit better rotations and kind of double committing just a little less as well. The thing I really saw in this game number two is the fact that OWU was able to, on their intercepts, on their clears, be passing it to a teammate on the side wall or in the midfield. It was never out to space or just into uh, a defender, but really to their teammates. It's whether they maintained possession all the way down the field on the conversion, something that Hawking Gold just couldn't quite seem to do. A lot of their clears, a lot of their sends downfield were not to uh, their own player, but just into space or to an opponent. And ultimately, that giveaway of possession cost them four goals, in a, um, which only two they were able to respond to. And that means that yeah, and, and, now going into game three here, it's a tough game. And, and one of those two really was kind of a free goal just because OWU was so overconfident, kind of cheating forward after getting so many goals. We saw that that big breaking, you know, booming clear that they were able to steal a goal. But yeah, you're absolutely right. All these booming clears really just to, uh, to the opponent. So they're not able to come away with any solid plays. We haven't seen too many pass plays, some give and goes. Really not even that many shots on goal against this OWU team. So I would like to see Hawking just a little bit more aggressive. But we do need those quality shots, not just the quantity. Quality's got to come out here in game three now. It's going to be a first offensive for WU. Not a good sign. Tiger again, though. The MVP, the main striker for OWU at center. And the shot comes out. Not quite the target. So now the real Logan can take this downfield. Try to maintain possession. Follow it up. A decent 50 minutes goes up high, but Macy gets to it first. Now WU is going to maintain this offensive pressure. Yeah, nice clear here across midfield as well. Looking for that help, but not quite there this time. As Grim jump will be taken away from and again floating in front of the net a big demo here nothing able to come from that one may stay will find a bump and just most still able to regain and find the defensive stop the demos are coming out left and right they fire the shot zim ghost there on the defense as well and well this is certainly a more aggressive game than we've uh, seen so far oh but taiga again showing off that offensive prowess Going for the flip reset and then the dunk at the end. OWU showing up for game number three. Looking for a clean sweep. And they are starting off strong. Yeah, Tiger definitely has mad skrills. And they're certainly putting on a clinic here in this series. Up by one. OWU looking to get out the brooms and find the sweep here. As the, they were bested in week seven by Hawking Gold. But... Certainly looking to answer back big as they are hungry for this sweep here. Uh, 350 on the clock, already up by one. Offensive opportunity here for that miss. He's it's a clearing opportunity here. Taiga is going to be striking fear into the hearts and a fake there. He's going to go past one, the bump pass fake. It means Taiga is able to slam one home. I mean, just a, just a one-man wrecking crew at the moment, a juggernaut, if you will, putting on a display, and goal after goal after goal from game to game to game. You called Taiga the MVP, and it's certainly for a reason. He's showing it here in all three of these games. Just an outstanding performance by Taiga. Now long lob shot, almost went in with the defense. He's just there for it. OWU now. On the defensive, the place they haven't been super often. This Tiger, though, now going downfield, zooming as a bump stretch come on the defense, but he stays strong. And Hawking Gold, not giving him a third goal quite yet. Three minutes left to go. Plenty of time to come back. Right now, all defensive pressure is in the hands of OWU. They're not willing to let go of it. Yeah, again, just quicker getting to the ball as well, and maybe it's due to that boost starting that they've been doing. A nice shot opportunity here, but again, no second chances coming for the way of Hawking. The counterattack, and Tyga from downtown yet again finds a goal and a hat trick for game number three. That speed and those connections, teammates is what's been giving OWU the lead in both of these games, and really just the offensive uh, advantage here and the boost starving as well we saw just really limited hawking gold on those defensive plays and they just could not get enough boost and enough power onto these shots to make it go home it's off the crossbar though it's going to be dangerous but the defense does get to it first so off the wall well, bounce center and with no boost in their tank nothing can happen here and go center again another shot coming out for OWU to go far down field the defense able to get back just in time for the defense yeah, OWU really just executing their plan nicely here on all aspects of the field. Offense, defense, 
field possession, boost consumption, you name it, playing to a T so far today. And well, that's why they find themselves here at series point. Hawking though, Grimjow will find one, 2.12 on the clock. There is plenty of time, but OWU is not gonna make it easy for them. Yes, finding the defense out of place, being a little too aggressive against OWU. So they gave us some of their previous goals and they can shut down here the rest of the game. Recognize that they have the ability to maintain some good defensive pressure and stay on top of the Tigers gonna go downfield again. And we pass center off the corner. And now the real world after the play here off the backboard. Is the shot coming in? It will and Tiger putting home a fourth row WU. Yeah, I mean, again, we just talk about how they get so many second and third chance opportunities. We'll see one off the wall there from Zim. Tyga in great positioning, able to finish this one off with fierceness. That one on home, now up by three. Hawking Gold has to begin to feel this one slipping away. They need to make a stand here soon, but it's hard, right? Just Mo, though, comes out with a quick one, and that's the answer they need here. An aggressive cheat means that no one's home on the defense. Just Mo able to put one home, reclaim a second goal for Hawking. And that would be you. The lead has been cut in half down to 4-2. 153 left. Is that enough for Hawking Gold to reclaim a victory away from OWU? We will see. I think it's going to, certainly going to be very, very tough, as we mentioned. Not impossible, but highly unlikely, unless they start putting this work together soon. And Zim Ghost is certainly going to make that, doesn't make sure that happens. With another house. So again, it's just going to be really, really tough for this Hawking College team. If they're able to find a goal here or there, but they don't really have an answer or a way to slow down this OWU team. Hawking goal thirsty for boost on the back line, and that means that they're just going to be starved again and again here. The speed to all of their possible resources to vanish. That goes of the posts. And real Logan here trying to clear this out off to the side on downfield. Back to the defense with that back pass and trying to get past some of that offensive pressure. And now out of their own half, Hawking goals going to find a way here. Make an offensive drive in the last minute ten. We'll see a minute ten. Still plenty of time in the crazy game of Rocket League, but it is going to be tough against this tough team. And the demos are still coming out. The ball knocking at the net here is just Mo. Tries to find one, but Zim goes with the clear. Now high and dry across the ceiling. Tiger's got it. You got to look out. And just small. We'll be able to steal this one off the wall. The booming clear. Not there, though, as Grimjow has to pull out the defensive stop. Tries to get it over the head. This team is relentless. Shot after shot. An absolute firing squad. But Hawking Gold able to somehow come away with that defensive stop. With half a minute left. OWU is looking to maintain this pressure, maintain possession, and maybe try to put home another one. A sixth goal, a nail in the coffin. And as they keep going here, flip for set, another shot. The defenders, though, going to make sure that goes away. But the follow-up shot is there for, and it goes in. Six to OWU, 20 seconds left. And that has got to be the last nail in the coffin here. Yeah, you know, going to be going to be taking this one in sweeping fashion here. OWU again, you know, out for vengeance, right? They lost uh, in a 3-2 series earlier in week seven to Hawking College Gold. So now in the playoffs, just out for this vengeance, certainly doing it in dominating fashion as well as it will take it three games to none here. But again, hats off to both teams for even making it this far. A lot of talent out on the field here today. Both teams up today, it's one of those OWU and Taiga, the Angel of Doom, spelling the doom of Hawking Gold here as Zem goes to put away gold number seven. Not quite a Brazil, but I think the point has been made. OWU will move on to the semifinals. Yeah, and, and you know, as you mentioned, how big this roster is, you got to wonder if that, you know, during those losses, if Taiga was in play, if Zim Ghost was there, because they certainly had a really great team chemistry and uh, certainly looking better than a number three seed out there today, in my opinion. Yeah, they really showed up, and Taiga, we were calling him the MVP, you know, the entire time, and he really just showed up. The flipper, the mechanical ability, those flipper sets, the wave dash shots, just outplaying all of Hawking Gold, and that really, I think, was the difference maker here between these two teams. Yeah, I mean, he just had great aerial control, the mechanical ability, the flip resets, knowing when to fake them as well. And 
uh, really drawing in those defenders, kind of causing them to double and triple commit, feeling like they needed to add that pressure against Tiger. So certainly the playmaker out there today. It was a lot of fun to watch. I know there's uh, more great games coming up here, though, Zach. Yeah, lots of much more ga great games. We have another game coming up soon after this one, which will be myself and Oddfell, and that is Mount Union Purple versus Illinois Springfield. So don't go anywhere. That is going to be at 6.30 p.m. EST. Again, thank you all for coming out for this first game. It's been an absolute pleasure casting with you, Hot Sauce, and we will see you all after a very short break.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to more NECC Rocket League action. My name is An Odd Fellow. Joining me on my that direction is Zach Tech. How you doing tonight, brother? I'm doing fantastic. We had an absolutely wonderful first series tonight. It was a 3-0 sweep, but we had some close games there. But now we've got another game lined up, and I think it's going to be a fantastic one, Odd Fellow. It's going to be just an absolute banger. I'm excited for both of these teams, and I think we have some lives for you to show you. Absolutely. Uh, so to start things off, we are going to have Mount Union Purple, University of Mount Union. Uh, and this lineup is going to consist of Candy Guy, Thunder, and Zanny. So a senior and two freshmen. Quite the uh, gap there, but hopefully maybe that means that there's some uh, senior, you know, experienced veteranness that uh, can help coach these Thunder and Zanny. Really bring together uh, you know, that sort of solidifying uh, knowledge and calmness maybe from someone who's older helping out these young guns but we'll have to wait and see maybe it's just thunder and they're going to show up and just maybe carry their te old teammate but now we've got university of illinois springfield here becky slothish and sniper uh, a bunch of juniors so a bit older here in the middle of the pack but uh we're gonna see we have a computer science and business administration so a little bit of uh Mathematics here, some computer works. Maybe it's going to come onto the field, see some uh, interesting creative plays. Maybe it's going to be very calculated, very mechanical. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see. Now, this has all the potential to be an extremely interesting matchup. This is the number one seed in Mount Union versus the number eight seed in University of Illinois, Springfield. So, Zach, Mount Union's coming into this with a record of 8 0. Illinois Springfield has 2 and 6. They met in week one. And Mount Union won that matchup three to one. Do you think we're going to see a repeat of that? Or do you think after the course of the season, Illinois Springfield might have a chance to take this one and kind of cause an upset early? My guess is that at best, Illinois Springfield is going to get two of the five possible games here. Now, we have not seen them win uh, very many series. One of their wins actually was because of a forfeit. So technically, Illinois Springfield has only won one series all season. And who knows, maybe with, you know, the seven weeks in between, they've devised a plan to take them out in Union. But currently, I don't think that's going to happen. But we have to wait and see. The gameplay will speak for itself here as game number one has started. And Ooh. the passing play just going wide. The backflip makes sure the shot doesn't come through. No one people have to clear this out here. I like seeing that that sight early on in the game from Mount Union to be able to uh, look for those kind of passing plays. Like you said, unfortunately, Zanny hitting the backflip there, not quite able to connect with the pass, but Mount Union's looking for it. So that's something that Illinois Springfield is going to have to look out for throughout the course of the night. So we're going to see Becky here trying to play this one out of the left-hand corner. The offense from Mount Union just absolutely dominant so far in the first 60 seconds, not allowing Springfield to get anywhere as the pitch comes in from Candy Guy, but does get saved away by Illinois Springfield. Center here, possibly for a shot, but Becky able to clear that away. Slothish now working his way through the backfield, trying to make something happen here. He's now two on the goal line. Another Ooh. shot coming in, and Thunder will put home the first goal from Mount Union. And this is just an unfortunate series of events. It looks like a, an unfortunate back touch there by Becky. Sniper is forced to kind of scramble to turn it away and just isn't able to get a hard enough shot on it to uh, actually get it out of the box. So Thunder just being right there, smacking that one home. Three minutes, 48 seconds left to play. Mount Union up top on one, but... This kickoff going the way of Illinois Springfield, so maybe we see the table start to turn here before the halfway point in game one. Ooh, that has a chance as Becky's shot is turned wide. I believe that was Zanny turning that one away. Shot opportunity something we really like to see out of these teams. I think they can put something near on net with Beacon. Having a scramble on back is a good sign that they have some offensive prowess here that they can surprise Mount Union with. Thunder trying to pass it down to Zanny again. I, I like seeing that. Like I said, Candy Guy trying to come in as Zanny gets another backflip. So all three players from Mount Union were up. Illinois Springfield has a chance, but Thunder is able to get back quickly and save that one away. I'm liking the speed I'm seeing so far from Mount Union. Illinois is getting these opportunities. They just have to capitalize on them as Slothish. Not able to win that 50 with Candy Guy. Candy Guy off the backboard looking for Thunder. Trying to put it top post. Not able to get it as that, I believe, is going to be Becky turning that one away. A little bit of offense starting to go the way of Illinois Springfield, but as of yet, they have yet converted into points. A sniper here trying to keep it going, but 
Clear downfield means that it's back down to the last man to clear it out here. I think he's downfield looking for redirect. Possibly no, the fake out. No, team Ooh. play. Ooh, just off the post. And that was some creativity that we like to see out of Springfield. And again, Springfield is getting these good offensive pushes going. They just have to be able to capitalize on them. I'd like to see some more passing plays as this one has a chance of a fantastic shot from Sniper. And he is going to snipe it in from the 50-yard line. After the pressure, seeing Thunder was awkward, taking his time, and then able to find out the hole on the defense. They're seeing no one was back in time. That's a great shot to equalize here with just under half the game left to go. It's people here having a chance here in game number one to take it. And that goal actually kind of leads into something I was going to bring up about Mountain Union. I'm liking the aggression and the offense that I'm seeing out of them, but that goal shows why they have to be careful about how they do it and make sure that their third man is in a position to be able to get back quickly to avoid turnaround goals like that. And speaking of, off the backboard with the pass to Candy Guy was Thunder, and that is going to be Mountain Union regaining the one-goal lead. Great passing play there. The defense is not quite back in time. Having to jump at an awkward angle to read off the backboard, but any guy was there first to slam at home. And a 2-1 lead here. Two minutes left to go. Plenty of time to come back. Only Springfield right now having their goal peppered with shots. Yeah, and that's what you're going to see out of an aggressive team like Mount Union. Again, these guys are the number one seed. They know what they're doing. They're really not trying to deal with an upset this early on. They have the skill and the potential. And again, they beat Illinois Springfield in week one. So they're trying to make sure that uh, Springfield doesn't start getting that Cinderella story going early as Candy Guy's going to fire that. Oh, that was Becky was looking for the touch mid to send it away, but wasn't able to get it. So Candy Guy gets the cross goal. Cross, pitch, goal. Eh. Yeah, the patience there from Kenny Guy. Wait for the ball to come to him. Wait to bait out the players of the Springfield team. They go a little farther forward and then just slamming it down into the open net. Great job, great patience there. That type of control you want to see at Mount Union. Thunder trying to keep this one in play. Looking for the pass down to Zanny is old. Oh, that almost had a chance. Mount Union was looking for something spicy, but Zanny unfortunately getting a little bit too underneath the ball and popping it up towards the crossbar. Sniper turning this one away. Candy Guy with the whiff, so Sniper has another chance at an open net here, but that is going to be, I believe that was Zanny getting back quickly and getting that save off the backboard. Thunder losing that 50 in the corner, but Candy Guy is there in support off the left wall. Passing it mid, Thunder not quite able to get there in time, so that's going to be Becky with the carry, not able to send that one into the net. Thunder, dangerous pass across his own net, but none of the players from Illinois Springfield were there to capitalize. 45 seconds left to go here, Zach, and Springfield has got to get something going if they do not want to lose this game one. Yeah, but the lack of control here, being pressured on their own back line, not able to get enough boost to really send this out and maintain control throughout the midfield. He said it's all Mountain Unit traffic. So they have they push home another one. Thunder securing goal number four for them. And again, that reckless offense really working out for Mount Union here just because Illinois Springfield aren't quite able to get the big clears. But this was a really, really good job by Thunder to key in on the fact that this that goal had a chance. He just needed to be there to help push it through because Candy was a little bit awkward. So great offensive push there from Mount Union results in the fourth goal of the game. 20 seconds left to go here. Three goal advantage for Mount Union. Make that four as they slam home the fifth goal of the game. That's a beautiful pass by Thunder. He's got some space to work with off the ceiling. A quick pass down. And just getting to it first. Zanny spotting it out, slamming it home. And that is a nice five to one lead. 20 seconds left. And I think this is game one lockdown for Mountain Union. Oh, I think that's pretty safe to say at this point, Zach. But you know what they say about third time's the charm. That was the third time that Thunder tried that exact play to Zanny. And finally, it's able to work. Slothish, though, saying, hey, we're not quite done yet. Punishing the misplay by the defense here, getting up to it first. The speed, a great job reclaiming a goal. Obviously, some momentum here. That's what you really want to do for Springfield here. And obviously, you maybe can't lock down this game number one. But getting momentum going to game number two, getting some positive vibes going, is going to really push yourself to a positive place and possibly a victory in game number two. That's exactly what I was going to say. Sometimes you don't necessarily, it, when you're down like this in the first game, just getting that last goal is, is, is enough to help you out. As Thunder tried to make it Mount Union, getting the last goal there, but was turned away at the last second. So, last laugh going to University of Illinois Springfield. Now, that was a bit of a blowout. Three goal win, seven games of Rocket League uh, this season and only lost three of them.
Uh, and one of them was to Illinois Springfield in week one. So Illinois Springfield has taken a game off these guys before. However, that was in week one. So we'll have to see if they're still able to kind of bring that back. Whereas on the flip side of it, there's only been five games won this season in favor of University of Illinois Springfield. So they definitely have that kind of bottled up potential to be able to pull something off here because this is the playoffs. Literally anything can happen. That's the beauty of the postseason as we are getting underway here in game two. You know, a little midfield presence here for Illinois Springfield because they've got some offensive pressure going here. They're going to control a little bit. But now, if all three players from Union are downfield, Ooh. they start to the side. Can a counterattack happen here? Possibly. It's out center. Becky's the only one there. Oh, what a shot on net, and Becky putting the first go goal home for Springfield. What a fantastic play here by Becky, getting up quickly and getting a beautiful redirect from the midfield line. Zanny trying his best to get back unable to get back quick enough so illinois springfield striking first here in this game too that is exactly the kind of momentum that they needed coming into the rest of the series people dropped in the middle spotting out the commitment by mountain union the counterattack was beautiful now and they maintain some of this presence in the midfield we see all three push in the same spot here and they capitalize on that but no throwaway ball there almost going in off the crossbar now it's becky trying to clear this out it goes back towards that sniper downfield becky Connection here, possibly out to the side. He's gonna follow it up. It is slothish to hear the play downfield. Becky waiting at the midfield, trying to chase this one into the left wing corner. Handy guy. And the best he can to send it out. Becky getting a nice pinch with him. Does finally get cleared away by Thunder as Mount Union starts to go on the attack here with three minutes and 41 seconds left to play. Another nice touch from Illinois sends it back towards the Mount Union side of the pitch, but. Mount Union still continuing to put the pressure on. This is another downfield pass. It's going to be slothish this time. What a play from Illinois Springfield taking advantage of the aggression from Mount Union. And it's these counterattacks, the spotting the player in the midfield, able to beat the last defender nice and quick. That Springfield has just been fantastic at this game so far. And right now, Mountain Union, okay, they're a little too aggressive right now. We need to find a way to regain on the defense. Make sure we keep that strong rotations quick. Otherwise, these counterattacks are going to be deadly the rest of the game. And that is something that I brought up in game one as I was seeing how Mount Union was developing their offense, that it could, it did have the potential to result in something like this happening. These big uh, uh, fast break plays going in the favor of their opponent. And Springfield seems to have keyed in on that as well as they've adjusted beautifully. Slothish going for it off the backboard, but is turned away by Thunder. Had a potential to be a fantastic goal there by Springfield. And sometimes just those goals themselves are enough to give you a ton more momentum swinging in your favor. Here back, passing it. Now, counterattack opportunity here up into the corner. It's a good touch. It's continuing towards the net. Sniper gets up to it. A decent 50 minutes pops out of center, but Becky gets beat to it. It's back towards net. It's off Ooh. the post, but it's in by Zanny. And this is fantastic positioning by Zanny. I thought maybe that ball had a chance, but it does ring off the sidebar. Zanny noticing it the last second and adjusting mid to be able to smack it home. Great finish there by Zanny. Mount Union finally getting their first points of game two. Half the game left to play here. Illinois Springfield finding themselves up by one and a very nice kickoff going the way of Illinois. Got some space here in the midfield. Like he's going out to the corner for the first and two it. He is a Mount Union player. And I get center Springfield. I'm missing the captain here. They are two goals up, so they don't have to score. But keeping us much of pressure and getting some cushion would be wonderful here for them. Thunder trying to chase this one down. Does get a nice 50 against Sniper. Zanny not quite able to get enough power, but Candy is there at the midfield. Zanny again with a touch towards the net that has a chance. Candy got trying to finish it, but no. Does get turned away by both the crossbar and an Illinois Springfield defender. Nice demo coming out there as Thunder's trying to collect this one, but Illinois Springfield are finally able to maintain control and get that ball away. Slothish sending that one mid. That was a decent touch there, but unable to score any points. Becky. Underneath one defender, Thunder turning it away off the backboard. That's going to be Slothish looking for the rebound, but not able to convert anything out of that one. Any guy sending it towards the Springfield net, but turned away quickly by Becky. Now Union scrambling here in the last 90 seconds to try to not lose game two. And loving these connections out of the backfield into the midfield. Springfield always finding a player to 
really pass it through the midfield too. Instead of throwing it out into space and trying to chase it down, really finding the players they have already downfield, make sure they maintain possession, and then creating that counterattack opportunity has really been opening up the game for them right now. That had a chance to go there for Mount Union, but luckily uh, Becky, I believe, was the one that was speedy getting back on that. Becky not quite able to get his flip reset there mid to try and pass it or take a shot. Thunder now driving this, looking for the 50, not able to get it. Great defense there by Becky. Sniper now waiting and sending it out towards mid where Zanny is going to wait patiently to try and make a play. Does end up losing that 50, and Springfield doing a fantastic job of keeping the offensive presence in the Mount Union side of the pitch this game. Last game, it felt like the ball was on the Springfield side about three minutes of the game. This game, it has just felt like all Springfield all the time. Great midfield pass from Slothish there, but neither of his teammates there for support. So they pass this midfield presence again. The speed for Springfield has really come out this game, too. They really upped their ante, losing some good boost, maintaining. It's a good pad pickup and presence on the play. Love to stay in the play with Thunder tying it up with 15 seconds left. That score just off the corner. A beautiful job to make sure you can get past the defense. Incredible solo play here by Thunder. Great pass to himself and then fantastic angle there at the end to get it over both defenders and just really slide it in behind the left side woodwork. 15 seconds left. Tie game. Candy guy gets the kickoff to go in favor of Mount Union. That's going to be Zanny trying to tie it up, or excuse me, take the lead, but Becky is able to turn that one away at the last second. Candy Guy passing it mid. Zanny is up, looking for the shot backward. Sends it back mid. Thunder waiting. Is he going to get the shot? No, it's turned away, and Zek, we're going to overtime. Springfield defense staying strong. Now, it looks like it was a bit of a fake kickoff there, but Blake, or sorry, Becky able to read it. Flothish tries to get some presence on it. Uh-oh. Demo here coming out. The back line, is it still there? I can't tell. There's Becky to clear it on out. Can they follow it up? Flothish here trying to help out. Becky's in there for the teammate. It goes up. Is there anyone to shoot it? No, off the backboard it goes. Does he get pushed center though, but it gets cleared out by Mountain Union. Becky looking for the redirect off the corner, not able to get it. Does get recentered by Slothish, but Candy Guy eventually turning it away. Thunder waiting on the wall. Not quite enough power is what he was getting there. Sniper. Sending it towards the backboard. Zanny getting up early. I'm really liking the backboard defense here from Mount Union. They're not allowing Illinois Springfield to get any sneaky plays in here. Illinois has got to start being a little bit more methodical with how they're doing this. They, I, I'd like to see a couple more infield passes from them. I haven't seen quite enough. I like, like There were a couple early games that resulted in those first two goals. We really haven't seen anything out of their passing game since. Uh, and I'd really be interested to see if they took that out here in this overtime, if they, if they might be able to to convert here, Slothish in the left wing corner, trying to center it for a teammate. Becky waiting, but Thunder is able to turn that one away. This one is going to end up on the Springfield side of the pitch. Well, good turn, control here. Not enough boost to really get a lot going here, though. It's going to go dangerously center. The dem opening things up, but Becky's able to stay on top of it to clear it out here. And again, Mayan still pushing here on Ooh. the offense. He's presented by Becky again in the right place in the right time on that defense. Down for Thunder out to the sidewall. We can follow up with Becky to try to clear it down. 50 makes sure it stays in the midfield. Here's a clear. Trying to go center for a teammate, but clear up a Mountain Union. Make sure that that does not turn into a scoring opportunity. Almost two minutes into this overtime, and Becky is finally able to put it in. Fantastic redirect. Just barely out of reach from the Mount Union defender. And Zach, we are looking at a tie series one apiece. That's a beautiful job by Slothish to go down. Really put some pressure on the defense, searching for the demo. Make sure that net stays wide open so Becky can slam it home off that wall bounce. A great job in a 1-1 series now going into game three. And speaking of Becky, we said his name a ton this game. He scored the first goal. He got the assist on the second goal. He got a ton of clutch saves and then scores the overtime goal as well. So Becky, definitely game MVP for game two. And I think that uh, Illinois Springfield needs to kind of lean on him going into the rest of the series as now we're tied up at one apiece. So this is really their best chance to try and force a massive upset here early in the bracket. Becky. MVP not only on the offense, but also on the defense. We saw several times Becky, the one rotating at the last second to make those saves. Make sure that ball goes wide. The Mountain Union offense denied by Becky on some of these plays. Fantastic job. But now five minutes will decide who goes on to match point. So Springfield have had pretty massive momentum going into each of the last two games. They scored the last goal of game one and then obviously win in overtime in game two. But Mount Union 
Nine seconds in, get the first goal of game three, and I think that might be the momentum swinging fairly solidly in their favor. Uh, Beck trying to read it off the back one there. Just went a little bit high. Able to play underneath, found the passing play mountain unit, putting home goal number one within the first nine seconds. And that's where that high speed and high aggression offense for Mount Union really pays off is in those early seconds of the play before Illinois Springfield has a chance to get into their defensive positions. Sniper trying to clear this one off. Handy guy. A little bit of a bump there, getting some physicality, but there is going to be a defender back to keep Thunder from centering that. Slothish off the wall. It's a nice touch, not quite able to follow it. Candy Guy popping it up towards the ceiling. That's a little, gonna be a little bit awkward, but it does end up falling into the backboard. No shot for Springfield just yet. That's gonna be a shot on it. Candy Guy's gonna miss it. Slothish slotting that one between the top bar and the defender. Now lack of control here on the defense means the Slothish able to spot them out, find the hole and slam it home just under the crossbar. We have a tie game now in the first minute. And that's just un an unfortunate uh, uh, miss there from Candy Guy. It looked it looked like one of those balls that you think is going to hit the top bar, the top bar, but you're not 100% sure, so you're not really in the right spot yourself. And he just kind of fell victim to that, and that's why he wasn't quite able to get there and reach that one. But Thunder trying to play that one low and slow, but not able to sneak it into the bottom third. Becky towards the backboard, trying to center for a teammate. Gets a bump on the defender. Slot is scoring it off the bump from Becky. So all three Mount Union players commit on the offense. Becky trying to make the counterattack happen. The passing play and Swathish again, the second man falling up, finding the cracks in the armor and slamming it home. Springfield take the lead 2-1 exactly a minute into this game. I'm loving the physicality that I'm seeing out of both of these teams early in this game three. I think they both kind of keyed in on the fact that as this series goes on, they're going to have to start being more physical with each other. A lot more bumps, a lot more demos, and really trying to clear out these passing lanes and clear out these defenders. Because both teams, honestly, have extremely solid defense, and they're very good at putting together passing plays. Uh, especially now that Springfield is kind of keyed in on where the holes in Mount Union's offensive push are as Thunder pushes that one through. Definitely, he's been hitting the gym. Did the fake out from Zanny. Becky goes up trying to read it, but Thunder waits the patience to make it awkward and then just slide it underneath the defender. And Mount Union equalizes very quickly. And that just shows fantastic communication there between Mount Union with Zanny probably being like, hey, I'm going to fake him, I'm going to fake him. And so Thunder knowing that he has time to just be patient with it and let it float and really kind of get in Springfield's heads. Great job tying the game up there from Mount Union. Zanny looking for the redirect, popping it off the sidewall, not quite quite able to put it in position for a teammate. That's gonna be Zanny who's gonna clean this one up off the pass from. I couldn't quite see that one. It was a little bit buggy. That's gonna be Candy Guy. Double commit there for Springfield means that there's nobody home. They missed the boost in the corner as well. So low boost, double commit, no one home to clear it out. And Mount Union now taking the lead here, three, two. And right now this looks like it's a shootout of a game. Absolutely. This is the Mount Union that we saw in Game 1. Springfield did a really nice job of shutting them down in Game 2, but they have come back with a vengeance here in Game 3. And I think a lot of this is going to have to come down to that midfield control. Illinois Springfield was doing a fantastic job not allowing too many passes to go across the midfield line that they weren't at least contesting. Whereas in this game, Mount Union is just sending it back over the Illinois Springfield side of the pitch pretty much at will as Zanny tries to slide that under a defender but unable to do so. Becky a 50 towards the sidewall. That is going to be won by Thunder now, cleaning it up. Sniper waiting on the sidewall. It's going to be a demo midfield. Sniper sending it down for Slothish, who's not quite going to be able to connect. So Candy Guy able to get that one. Becky getting a nice defensive play at the midfield, getting bumped away by his teammate for his trouble. Slothish waiting in the right-hand corner. That's both members of Mount Union waiting for that one. This has a chance to be a good fast break for Springfield, but Candy Guy going to spawn up and get in the way early. On that defense, just barely there in time. The counterattack here, but Becky, again, that MVP for Illinois Springfield, getting back just in time, rotation on point. Looking for the counterattack here, but Thunder gets up for it, just in place. Spot over to the side, and Thunder again coming down on top of it to read, make the counterattack happen. What's the center? Is that in? No, the defense stays strong and pops it high. I mean, Sloth is trying to collect this one off the ceiling. Sniper waiting for him midfield, trying to be there in support. Thunder turning that one away. Zanny popping it back down to Candy Guy, but a little too much mustard on the pass. That's Candy Guy. It's a nice flick over the top of one. Passes it back mid for Thunder, and that's ooh, just barely going to ring off the top corner. I thought he was going to slip that upper 90, but not able to do so. Thunder not able to connect with the defense there on the sidewall. Candy Guy getting this one off. Trying to get a pinch with Zanny, but not able to get it. 
as Slothish playing this off the backboard was looking for the down but was not quite able to get it. So Mount Union now looking at potentially having a chance, but Becky able to get back before they're able to get the fast break goal to go. 75 seconds left to go here, Zach, and this is an insanely close game three. So many opportunities here for Mount Union. They're passing across the box, trying to make these plays happen. The mechanics are just quite there. But Springfield also quick rotations, making sure they have a player up at all times. Just getting back in time. It is very knuckled holding on. They are holding on just enough to make sure that they stay within one. Less than a minute left to go, though, is they have to try to score here. They need to throw the house downfield. Otherwise, it's not needed going on to match point, and they don't want that to happen. They've already got one to the name, but they want to do better than the last series. They want to improve this. But right now, this thunder? right off the corner is beautiful. And thunder slamming home goal number four for Mountain Union. Oh my goodness, what a solo play here from Thunder, getting the dunk over Becky, reading his own play off the corner and smacking it into the left side of the net. That might be the final nail in the coffin here for game three for Mount Union, as with 36 seconds left, they still have a two goal lead. Slot that's trying to get it going here. And just like that, that lead is cut back down to one. 30 seconds left to play and oh my goodness, Zach, this is just getting more exciting by the second. A beautiful kickoff to follow up. And that's why we've seen the score for Illinois Premier happen almost every single time. Is that close second man follow up, putting it just enough into space for him to follow it in, punch it home through the hole in the defense. That's what they need to do here. If they want to try to equalize here in the last 20 seconds. And it's going to go off the backboard. But the attacker does get demoed. So now it's a counterattack. All three players rushing downfield. Make something happen. And the demo coming out. It's a counterattack here. Opportunity. Swathish gets back off to the sidewall. All three players now downfield. Redirect oh. center. Becky in the oh. midfield. Off the crossbar. A follow for Swathish. But it gets cleared out to the sidewall. Another to the center. And it goes down. It's in front of the net. And it goes oh, in. He Becky! Old it. He own gold it. Oh my goodness. Thunder trying to control it and get it away from his net. But Becky just barely connecting it. And Thunder own goals it to send us to overtime in game three. And with one second left on the clock, maybe something happens here, but I'm pretty sure we're going to overtime. And here Ooh, I didn't even realize go. there was a second left on the clock. I thought he did that at zero. Oh my goodness, Zach. This is such a turn of events here. This series is so much closer than I think any of us thought. Looking at the records of these teams coming in, looking at the performance from Mount Union in game one, but Thunder trying to get it done early in Mount Union. Going to take this overtime here in game three, 11 seconds in. 11 seconds is all it took. Uh, the wide rotation on defense, since it was wide open, Zinni able to punish it with Thunder. And that was a great job, Mountain Union. They're like, hey, we actually gave you the own goal, but we are claiming it in overtime. That was our game, and now it is a 2-1 series in favor of Mountain Union. These guys have me nearly jumping out of my physical chair. This is such a tight series. So Mount Union does have this on match point, but do not think for a second that they can go into this with anything other than, okay, we have to play all out here. Otherwise, Illinois will come back and they will take it to game five, which God, I want to see after the last couple games of Rocket League we've seen. Oh, game five would be amazing. But Illinois for right now needs to step up, of course, Mountain Union there with their all-out offense has really been able to score several times, really make it a shootout. So it's either going to be absolutely shut down that offense or can you outshoot Mount Union? And right now, I don't think it's going to happen. So really, it's the defense that needs to step up. Those rotations need to be clean. And then the counterattacks, they need to capitalize on every single one here. It's going to hold on. And it just, Illinois Springfield is fighting with everything they have. They're catching Mount Union off on their rotations, but there's times where they have to be a little bit faster as right there, Becky gets a nice bump on the Thunder to keep him from being able to get the follow on double tap. Andy Guy, falling back here, sending it back towards that. Oh, that's such an awkward challenge there. I believe that was Sniper who just barely mistimes his challenge and Candy Guy able to get an early first goal here. On the teammate fake out there from Mount Union, Coming in, it looked like someone might clear out to the sidewall, so it caused the defense to hesitate with a quick turn and shoot from Candy Guy. So they're going to claim an early goal here, and that might just be what it takes to claim this game number four in the series. But Illinois Springfield here, the counterattacks are going to be possibly dangerous, but no. Danny quickly shooting it down and making an opportunity of his own. The shot now to the far side ricochets off the back wall, wall and here they go on the counterattack. Becky. 
waiting on defense, trying to send this one out, but Candy Guy getting it past him. That's going to fall dangerously in front of the net, but fantastic defense. I think that was Sniper just barely getting in the way. Now Slothish and chase this one off the left wing corner. Does get beat by Zanny. Ball's going to pop mid. I like the patience there from Sniper. I wish he would have been a little bit quicker to it and made it a 50 because now he gets demoed for his trouble and Candy Guy's passing it middle. Ooh, that ball is going to sing off the top of, I believe... I don't even know who that was from Mount Union that ended up setting that back towards their own side. But Slothish waiting for this one off the sidewall, immediately turned away. Springfield trying to get some offense going without being too aggressive. And I like the way they're doing this. They're being slow. They're being methodical. They're chipping away at the defense from Mount Union. And eventually, one of those chips is going to turn into a crack. Trying to pull out that armor, find the chink in it, and then shove the dagger into Springfield. Right now, Mountain Union right now is standing strong off Ooh. the post. It goes, though. And that one going to start making Mountain Union shaking their boots. And Sloth is going to put it home to tie it up. And there's the dagger. The armor gets chinked away just enough as all the defenders from Mount Union find themselves a little bit too far out. Candy Guy just not able to get back quick enough. I think right there that's just a little bit of miscommunication between the Mount Union guys where like they think that everyone's in position right and they can start pushing forward. The Candy Guy is not quite back enough to be on defense there. So three minutes and 20 seconds left to play here and we are seeing yet another tied game here in game four as Illinois Springfield trying to make something happen and push this towards a game five. That's going to be Becky trying to play it off the corner, but not able to get it. Candy Guy sending it towards the Springfield side of the pitch. Sniper, excellent boost control here, playing it himself, not quite able to get it towards the sidewall before being turned away by Thunder. Rotations from Springfield looking really solid. Slothers has a chance to finish this off. What a play there by Illinois Springfield. And the ball in the midfield, two players ahead. It's a pass him. The third man was just wide looking for boost. Didn't expect a counterattack. That means that the lead is going to go over. Illinois Springfield has a great job, great heads up play there by Slothish as well to follow up and make sure that it gets put in. That's just one of those moments where you don't realize that there's still a guy on the other team on your side of the pitch and you think you're good to push forward, but you're not, as that's going to be a miss. Oh, but Slothish pushes it just too wide to the right. That could have been goal three of the game for Illinois Springfield, but now we're going to see Mount Union back on the attack. And a beautiful defensive play there from Slothish as Candy Guy in the corner. Trying to make something happen here. Thunder trying to muscle it through, but fantastic defense by Becky, putting it off his own sidebar to keep that from going in and being the tying goal of the game for Mount Union. Under half the game left to play here. Mount Union knocking on the door, but are Illinois Springfield going to let them in? This has a chance off the backboard. Thunder in position after the demo, and he is going to score. That's going to be the tying goal of the game with two minutes left to go. Thunder right position, right time, gets the demo, ends up just in the right spot. Waits it out for Sniper to jump and then just chips it over him. A great job to tie up here. Just under half the game to go. Let's move for here. The counterattacks have been deadly, but they need to capitalize and swap it. Almost had that one for goal number three, but now they have to make sure it happens for sure here and make sure they should have any sort of counterattack opportunities for Mountain Union because it has been the counterattacks for both games that has been deadly. When they go too far downfield, they sent too many players downfield. That team taking that ball, spotting the chink in the midfield, throwing it downfield, and they have a player just in time to make sure a shot happens. Right here, Sloth is trying to make something happen. Get out of his own corner, but the pressure from Union will, make, will stay sustained as Sloth is going to pop up his own backboard. That's going to be dangerous. Oh, Thunder trying to send it mid for a teammate, and it's going to fly back in front of the Springfield net again. Now, one thing Springfield has to be careful about here is how they clear this ball. If they just boom it back downfield, they're going to give it right back away to Mount Union. They really need to start looking for some of these clears to pass as Becky does a nice job sending that away, but Candy Guy able to get up quickly. However, Slothish going to be there, sending it back to Becky, but great read from Thunder to see that pass play developing and getting in the way early. Sniper. Getting beat underneath there. Is that's going to be a bump from Thunder? Becky with a nice 50 to keep it in front of his own net. 60 seconds left to play here. Becky looking for the redirect off the backboard. That's going to get dropped down. Great backboard defense there from Candy Guy. Thunder looking for the boom here. Becky is able to get up and turn it away into his own corner as Zanny's now trying to send it, but Becky getting a nice pinch. Unfortunately, bumping his teammate there and kind of slowing down the offensive push from Springfield. Thunder. Off the left side here, going for some fakes, looking for the mind game to slow things down and really try and open up a shot here. Candy Guy does get beat. Becky has a chance that's going back the other way, but Thunder is waiting for it in his own box. Up there, here, it's coming down to a lot of speed plays. Who has the boost 
who can get to the ball first? And currently it has been Mountain Union who has the speed and the boost with this counterattack opportunity here. Low boost offer to play with Swathish here. At 30 to his name, but not enough control to make something happen here. Just downfield. You've got five seconds left. You may see overtime once again. But Mount Union took it last time. Will they take it again? It's Springfield taking it downfield. They still have an opportunity here. Putting it down though, and it will go to overtime. Do or die for Mount Union here. They have the chance to clutch the series and send Illinois home for the season. Or are they going to allow Illinois to send us to game five as Zanny sends it off the backboard, but sent immediately away by the defense from Illinois Springfield. Slothage going up early. He's going for it. Slothage gets the goal. We're going to game five. Slothish, ran up his and Supersonic reads the bounce perfectly. Slothage just under the crossbar past both defenders. A beautiful drop into game five. Champions Field, I believe, and Illinois Springfield. Oh, they were holding on tight, and they are making sure that this series, it's going it, to, this is the banger of all bangers. The, the, this is not the series that I thought we were going to get looking at how these two teams stacked up coming into this. I think this falls into the category of one of those games where you're Mount Union and you're looking at this and going, eh, we smacked them in week one. They haven't done anything all season. We got this. And then Illinois Springfield being like, hey, we have the chance to do something special here. This is what we who like the March Madness and the college basketball stuff like calling a bracket breaker. This has every chance to be the Cinderella story for the playoffs if Illinois Springfield is able to pull it off here in game five. We saw in the last series before this today how it was, you know, the number three versus like the number five or six seed. And it was like, okay, I went to game five last time. It might be close. And it was a clean sweep. And then here we've got the one versus the eight seed. The ones who've won it all, the ones who've barely won it all. And now we're going to game five. Like Springfield, these are the guys looking to upset everybody's bracket, especially Mount Union's. Look, trust me, I have seen plenty of times in Rocket League and in traditional sports where it gets to the playoffs and the team that's been struggling all season just flips a switch and just starts dominating in the postseason. And Illinois Springfield is really looking to do something special here, but they do still have to get past this high-firing octane offense of Mount Union as Candy Guy trying to get started early but does immediately get turned away by Becky Springfield. Trying to get some offense going here in the right wing corner for Mount Union. Candy Guy is going to send that one away. However, Mount Union finds themselves on offense early. Candy Guy waiting on the backboard. Thunder trying to play it off the sidewall. And Mount Union not quite able to connect on anything as Springfield. Ooh, had a chance to go on offense, but that's going to be a miss. Thunder has a chance to carry it over, and he does. And that's going to be the first goal of the game for Mount Union. It's the fake flick that does it. The miss in the air and then taking the time, slowing down, not taking the shot, but just waiting to fake out Becky. Thunder secure goal number one, and that might be what it takes. But last time, I think they also got the first goal some of the games and ended up losing them. So Illinois Springfield, they're able to fight back still, and it's like four minutes left to go. Oh, absolutely. The Springfield team is not out of this by any stretch of the amount of the imagination of Mount Union. Definitely should not start getting complacent here as Becky trying to pass it for his teammate. Sloth is just barely not able to get that beautiful save by Zanny to keep that from being the tying goal. Becky, however, slapping it back towards the Mount Union side of the pitch. Going to the corner. Slothish there waiting. Does get a decent 50 with Thunder, allowing Sniper to come up and contest it. Slothish. Up towards the ceiling, gets a beautiful touch. Becky going up towards the backboard. Is it going to have a chance? No, and it rings off. Slot is trying to send it in, but the defense from Thunder holding strong. Now it's going to be Sloth is trying to send it in. Candy Guy again, keeping it away on the goal line. The defense from Mount Union holding strong. This is exactly what they need to do to win this game five. They do not want their season to end like this. And these quick turns, these falls off the backboard. Oh, it's been keeping them going. Oh, it's an amazing job here. It's sent it to the backboard once again. Not quite able to read it. Ooh, he's going to it just in time. Thunder looking to read this one off the sidewall. Becky is there to challenge it. Another player up very quickly. Sniper, the speed coming through. That's what we need to see out of Illinois Springfield. It's the speed and this control. And that is what's going to get this offensive pressure and possibly the goals. They are peppering the net over and over. Off this backboard it goes. The defense just barely getting up in time. And that's 50, though, will go back to their half of the field as Becky is bringing it out of their own half. We've seen it time and again from this Illinois Springfield offense, just chipping away, chipping away, chipping away at that brick wall defense of Mount Union, and eventually they're able to punch one of those bricks out and get a goal to go. They have not been that lucky thus far. 
half the game left to play here. Slothish mid to Becky, but Candy Guy reading that one immediately. Mount Union really starting to do a fantastic job here in this game five of seeing these passing plays that Springfield is putting together as they're developing. Slothish playing it towards his corner. Becky was trying to get it out, but Thunder there immediately. Beautiful speed to challenge it early. Slothish trying to get in the way. Candy Guy. Waiting for it here, allowing Thunder to make the touch, sending it back mid towards Candy Guy, but Slothish there waiting. Becky sending it towards the back wall, trying to pop it back mid for a teammate that is going to get turned away by the Mount Union defense. Under two minutes left to play, 1-0 lead here for Mount Union. All Springfield has to do is score one more time to tie this back up, and oh my goodness, what a game five we're seeing so far. Sniper not able to get it. Sandy off the ceiling is able to get the second goal of the game for Mount Union. If the was there, but ultimately, they were just going too fast, couldn't get enough boost, they get popped a little too high, and then the sniper shot from midfield means that Mountain Union claim a 2-0 lead, a minute 40 left, and it is do or die time for Illinois Springfield. They have to send the house, they have to put it all on the line here, there is no holding back. We've seen time and again in this series where Springfield have answered right back after a critical goal like that and scored one of their own. But, oh, almost a scoring a third goal there. But Becky able to be there for the goal line defense and getting the demo onto Thunder to boot. Candy Guy getting a nice touch back towards the midfield, but Slothish is going to be there on defense. Slothish trying to connect this one. Not able to win his 50 with Thunder, but that does get sent out by Sniper. Sniper and Becky both on the right wall there. A little close to each other, but Becky... Trying to get a touch here, get turned away by Candy Guy. That's going to be a push by Zanny, but he's not able to catch up to it. So Springfield getting away with one here, maybe. Yes, and Candy Guy not able to score that. Slothish trying to send it back towards the Springfield side. Less than 60 seconds left to go here for Illinois Springfield. They're down by two. There's a chance, but the door is closing quickly for them. The demos, we're going to, no! they saved their own shot. Mount Union keeps Springfield in it. They could have secured goal number three and possibly the nail in the coffin, but no, they saved their own shot. They're keeping the game going, and Illinois Springfield, 30 seconds left. Two goals they need to make, but right now the pressure is all Mount Unions, and they are going to make sure that Illinois Springfield can't quite break out, but there is a breakout right here. It bounces center, but the intercepts happening in the midfield are what's keeping Mount Union alive. Make sure these plays not up the passes, which aren't quite happening as Candy Guy is giving them a bounce here. Now off the sidewall, it's Slothish taking down field, but it does get beat off to the backboard. Another shot doesn't quite go in, and with three, two, and one, Mount Union will claim it in game five. Whew, Mount Union by the skin of their teeth coming away with the win here in the first week of the postseason. Definitely giving uh being given a run for their money there by Illinois Springfield. If I'm every other team in the bracket, I'm watching this game over and over and seeing, okay, where were the holes? What did they do? What can we do? And and this is definitely something that I think uh, Mount Union is going to have to spend a decent amount of time in the film room going over. And we're going, going up against Mount Union later in the bracket. They're studying this game, and they are absolutely trying to find out what Illinois did to stay alive here. And coming out as the eighth seed, you know, I don't think anyone really knew or thought that, hey, they've got a chance, you know, maybe they get one game, but it's probably going to be closer to a sweep. But no, they took them to game five. There was two overtimes, not just one, but two overtimes. And that was a close one, keeping it to a 2-0 in game five. But at the end of the day, falling just a little bit too short and Mountain Union claiming it all, moving on to the semifinals. And an amazing job by both these teams today. Absolute blast. Absolute blessed to catch with you, Odd Fellow. This has been an absolute pleasure to be here, and this is an amazing series. Absolutely, Zach. Couldn't have asked for a better series to start my night on and to end your night on, uh, as we are going to have two more matchups tonight. Uh, the next one up being Lebanon Valley and Hood College. My name has been an odd fellow. I'll be catching you guys after the break. Zach is going to be dipping out, and I will have somebody else joining me in the booth. You guys stay right there. We will be right back after the break.
Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to NECC Collegiate Rocket League action. My name, again, is An Odd Fellow. Joining me this time, however, is Bear Light. How you doing tonight, brother? Doing well. Can't wait to get on this B-Stream and uh, kick it off with you. Uh, it's been a pleasure. We've been dying to get on the cast together and finally a chance to do so. And uh, obviously with the NECC, when we talk about playoffs, we talk about crazy games. Speaking of which, you just got to see one as Illinois Springfield so close to uh, to upsetting the undefeated uh, team. Uh, and, and so what, what a series it was. We can only hope for uh, that to remain the case here moving forward. And on paper, this next matchup, this next Challengers Northeast matchup should be, should be the same kind of level, but obviously we've seen that that last one should have been a blowout and it was close. Maybe this one's supposed to be close and it's a blowout, but for this second matchup, excuse me, third matchup overall of the night, we are going to have Lebanon Valley College versus Hood College in a Challengers Northeast matchup. Lebanon Valley coming in at five and three. Hood College coming in at four and four. These two teams played each other in week four with Lebanon Valley taking the win three games to two. So they've gone to game five previously. The lineup for Lebanon Valley tonight is going to be Frenchy, Faithful, and Bichette's. Two, a junior, a senior, and a sophomore. So some nice age diversity here for Lebanon Valley. Yeah, right across the board, right, too, and in all business, as we're seeing pre-broadcast <laughs> here. They want to get down to business right now because they know the task at hand here. Obviously, they're coming in as a slight favorite at that 5-3 and three mark, like you had mentioned, Hood College coming in at 4-4 four and four across the pitch as they come in with uh, Nader Tots, of course, on that side for Hood College Blazers. It's still part of this Challengers Northeast division. They've been hanging in there, right, with a 4-4 record. So, uh, Nader Tot, all caps, and slam an 18 uh, to round out the roster for uh, Hood College. So, again, more business. Uh, all caps coming in as a junior, a senior for Nader Tot, and a grad student here in Slammon actually going to take the place here for Hood College Blazers. So, you have a bit of that experience and, of course, a bit of a brain, too. It, it's not an easy task getting to graduate school. As someone currently in college, I can 100% agree with that. It is a pain, and as a 26-year-old, I am so glad to see my age group being represented here because I guarantee you Slamin is almost 30. Exactly, but uh, so are we. <laughs> and uh, to be keeping Precisely. up with the mechanics of these kids, that's unreal, honestly. Yeah. Well, we got oh, the game coming up here. Again, number four facing off with number five, and you know it should be close in theory, like you said. Uh, we're thinking Lebanon coming in uh, might have the advantage here, though, too, because they've dropped three games this season. Like we mentioned, at five and three, who did they lose to? One, two, and three, respectively, in this division in the Challengers Northeast. So Alvernia, University Gold, uh, Howard CC Dragons, and Siena College Saints, who, by the way, all three of them combined, only four losses on this season between those three teams. So this is a hot team coming in. Uh, Lebanon Valley facing off with Hood College in a game number one. 
one. As Hood College trying to go to work here with a floater that was right in front of the net. Challenges the box, but no real harm done. As Bicet's going to get to it, grab boost, and challenge here in the offensive corner. Shad's trying to get something to go here. Immediately does that shot get turned away. Lebanon Valley trying to get some offense going, but ew, Hood College is just peppering the back of this. Sorry, I'm wow. losing control of where I'm at. Frenchie just coming in for Lebanon Valley. That's going to be the first goal of the game. I don't know whose team I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> a challenge after a challenge, though, as Vices is able to take a shot at it well high, but that's what happens with a good rotation. You're allowed multiple chances versus just the initial one. So Lebanon Valley getting the first challenge, getting the first goal as well. And 30 seconds in. Looking pretty strong. Hood put on the pressure early in the 30 seconds, but didn't get any really solid grade A chances. So that they've suffered great pass here in the box. Another oh. passing play here. Frenchie able to tap this one home, but it was all about the pass on this play. Beautiful passing play here, as you mentioned, from uh, Faithful down to Frenchie. Frenchie, great positioning, great early jump to set that one up. That's probably going to be the only goal we see the U.S. men's team uniform score at all throughout the World Cup time frame. <laughs> I'm sad. <laughs> that is uh, sadly a fact for us who live in the States. <laughs> you love, uh, love to make fun and light up its you here. Oh, and now it's just an onslaught. Faithful able to tap that one through. 3 0 11. And the, it's just all pressure all the time coming out of Lebanon College here. It's these same kind of passes, right? The ball coming in from the right side, getting the bounce in front, and that little bit of a bounce shot going into the net and just floating it underneath the crossbar. So the offense from Lebanon Valley looking really strong so far. Hood still having plenty of time here to come back in this. They just have to get the ball out of their half of the pitch. Yeah, they, you can't blame a Lebanon Valley for you know, creating the same chance over and over again because it's working right now. But I fear their uh, predictability. If Hood College is able to catch on, like I think that they're capable of, you know, it might be a different story here for Lebanon when we talk about games two, game three, right? But right now, obviously you want to take chances Ooh. where they are. And Nader right on cue, able to take advantage of that one to at least pull them back with him too. Nader Todd dropping down from the heavens to smack that one into the back of the net, giving the first goal of the game to Hood College. Now, as you remember the last series that we saw, one team won pretty handedly in game one, and then it ended up going the distance to game five throughout the rest of the series. So just because Lebanon is up now does not mean anything as Nader Tot comes quickly again, gets his second goal of the game. Didn't take him long. That one looked drawn up, didn't it? As it killed it right in yep. the middle of the field. And it looked like Bicets, unfortunately, uh, you know, Gone a little bit to the right of it, right? Could not quite locate where the ball was going to go. It's a tough read, after all, when you get that close behind uh, your player who just had the ball killed in midfield. So great play from Hood as they draw it up. It was not the predictability of Lebanon, but instead the prowess of Hood and the aggression that has led them to uh, pull themselves back within one. Shad's trying to get this out of his half of the field, but unable to maintain control. Slam and sending that one towards the back wall and getting a demo on the goal line as well. Really making the defense awkward here for Lebanon. Hood College trying to send it. Nice 50 there by Lebanon, but Hood immediately sending it back and just barely not able to get that redirect was Nader Tot off the backboard. Slamming. Not quite able to maintain control as French. He's trying to send it out right towards Faithful, but unfortunately not able to collect that one. Faithful trying to send it back mid towards Bichette, but he's not able to catch up to it either. So all of a sudden, Lebanon Valley looks like they've really had the brakes put on their offense that they had in the first half of this game. Yeah, that box is no longer available. And what happens is when you're reliant on that, Lloyd College has allowed the chance to push it right back down the field, and they've been able to do that. But not only that, been able to trap, use the trap game, stay in that spot too. Look at Frenchie coming up big. So Lebanon Valley able to strike back here from the mechanics in the Doomsie. He was allowed so much space. And I like the way he approaches this too, because he just barely nicks it, but he's in such a position where it's like, okay, is he gonna try and actually go for the Doomsie? Is he just gonna fake it? And he's able to just barely touch it with the front grill of his car at the last second. So great shot there from Frenchie, as we now see a two goal advantage here for Lebanon. That's gonna be a nice redirect. I think that was Frenchie again, sending that one skyward as Faithful is trying to collect this one off the backboard. Frenchie just underneath, and that's gonna be slamming, redirecting it back towards the Lebanon side of the pitch. And now Lebanon will collect their thoughts here. And a slow play out, a great passing play to get it back down the field, but did not have the third step in the process, AKA a shot to put on net. And things here at center, where Hood College has allowed the chance to challenge. 
And they're on it as well. All caps backwards. He still gets a great 50-50. But it'll fall into the hands of Frenchie no less. His no teammate across the pitch. Challenging the back wall. But it will be held down from Hood College. As this little bounce high. And Lebanon Valley could not locate it. So it still stays here at center. As Hood College was able to. As all caps. Now. A little sidestep one. Side wall though. Frenchie able to get it. Could pass back down. The tic-tac-toe. But the shot just a little bit wide. And the door starting to close very slowly here for Hood College. 90 seconds left, still enough time for them to get these last two goals, but they've got to make something happen quick here, the way that we've been seeing this offense and this defense from Lebanon Valley perform so far in the early parts of this game one. I believe that was slamming, sending that one into the corner, all caps, trying to send it mid for a teammate, but not able to get it, as the early challenges from Lebanon are really making it difficult for Hood College to not only get offense going, but to get some of these passing plays going as well, as Hood College just constantly feels like they need to be back on defense, otherwise they're going to get beat over the top so they're trying to get these passing plays together but they're not quite in position to make them happen and then when they are the interceptions like what Frenchie just had is really throwing off what they're trying to do on offense as that had a chance to go but all caps shot is turned away by Bichette's. Frenchie back on it gonna kill some more time just by lofting it out of the zone uses the flip reset at the very last second in order to push it forward as now Frenchie leaves it here in the box but it will be challenged quickly from Hood who will try to work in transition but it's Bichette's Right back on it. Holds it. Plays it back down to the corner. And we're down to 30 seconds remaining. And all caps will try and turn. But every single time they take one step out of the zone, it's answered by Lebanon. Lebanon. Faithful trying to send it. And oh, that shot. I believe that was, I believe that was Frenchie who just rang that off the top crossbar. Fourth man really coming in handy there for Hood College. But Hood College has to get their own offense going here quick. As with 10 seconds left to play, they're quickly running out of time to tie this game up and try and send it to overtime. Looking like Lebanon Valley is going to take the 1-0 series lead. And as we hit 1 and then 0, it is going to be 1-0 in favor of Lebanon going into the rest of the series. you gotta, you got to give them credit, too, because when we talked about Hood College, they were really you know, striking back to some degree. They had those two quick goals in a row, including one that was constructed there on a kickoff, and then suddenly it seemed like Lebanon was in trouble. But you're able to answer the call, right? They got it right back. Uh, that answered goal to make it 4-2 was a big uh, difference maker, not only for this game, obviously, which goes without saying, but also when you move your momentum into game number two, you kind of reset, you think about um, you know, what could have been for Hood College there, and it was taken away. Do I think Hood College is uh, you know, a step back because of it? I don't think so. I think they have a good chance to bounce back here in game number two, show uh, how they're able to take uh, goals one and two for themselves and perhaps apply it with a little bit more defense. But they got to get out of their own zone first because Lebanon Valley was doing a great job to hold them there. One of the biggest things that I noticed was after that second goal was scored by Hood College, Lebanon really kind of tightened down their presence on the midfield line. And that's when we started seeing those faster challenges, the pass interceptions, you know, all that kind of just midfield presence and defense yep. starting to happen a lot more frequently was after that first goal was scored. So it's going to be interesting to see if Lebanon Valley comes out with that same kind of mentality early in this game, or if Hood College realizes that that's where they went wrong and are able to step up enough on the midfield here early in game two to kind of flip the table here on Lebanon. It's all about anticipation. It's all about finding your passing lanes for sure if you're Hood College, because getting out of the zone could be as simple as that. You don't want to overcomplicate things either, uh, but maybe an extra thought process when you get out of the zone. They had the early pressure, but then once they got stuck in their defensive zone, it all went away. We'll see if that's the case. Good passing here from Lebanon Valley. As they look to really just cut copy pace if they can. But Hood College challenging now. Trying to tap it back down, but getting caught and trapped there from Frenchie. Just off the side of the net. All caps. Comes by Bichette's. Over to Frenchie. He tried to get that pass, but a little bit too hot to handle. It'll fall back down to all caps, and Hood College will start from their own end. Frenchie trying to send this one back towards the Hood College side. Does get immediately turned away. Lots of booming back and forth on the pitch here. Not quite as much passing as I would like to see uh, from these two teams, but I'm sure that'll develop as the game goes along as all caps struggling to try and get this one out. Does get faked out a little bit by Faithful, but not quite able to catch Frenchie. He was looking for the pass. Frenchie does watch that one go just wide left. As Faithful now. And take it himself. Looked like Bichette's thought he might drop it down to him, but did not overcommit on that. I like the patience there from Bichette's to not give the double commit away there on Hood College's side of the pitch. As Hood now trying to flip this one, all caps trying to send it over as no one able to collect that. And the defense from Lebanon Valley once again stonewalling Hood College at the midfield line. 
almost had the read as well. They've been very, very strong in the passing game prior. I'd like to see them kind of dive back into it a little bit. Like you mentioned, it had gone away, but they are starting to amp it up. But that's a mistake here. Let's, and luckily for them, it was a little bit wide, but Bichette's looked a little bit handcuffed on that last play. No harm done, though. The ball right back to you. Good passing. As Bichette's right back. Good challenge in the corner, but couldn't get back up to it. Was lacking boost, too. And now slamming the grad student. Tried to sidestep Frenchie, but it was not to be, as it was a great challenge from uh, out of vision, which is one of the big reasons why they were able to get across and make that save. What I would have liked to have seen out of Slam in there was maybe a softer touch or or even better, just fake the touch and go for the 50 and allow your teammates to really uh, to come up and make that final push as Frenchie looking for something, but all caps meets him in the air. Both these teams doing a great job in terms of challenging each other early, not allowing these passing plays or solo plays to develop as Bichette's now trying to play it off the left wall. Slamming. Slamming it back towards the Lebanon Valley side of the pitch. Bichette's meeting it in the corner. All caps not quite able to make that 50. And so here we are under half the game left to play. No goals scored yet on either side, Bear. And this game is significantly closer than game one was. It's been locked down for sure on both sides this time. I, I know... You know, Hood, Col Hood College has been trying to find a way. Oh, Whoa. great passing play again. So that's what Lebanon Valley was missing here. But then they are able to get it back here as, you know, when goals come as a premium, you got to take more shots. And that passing play was perfect as they found the far side net. And I love this pass, too, because you, you, you start on that right side. And if you get the touch well enough, uh, like Faithful was able to get there. You get so much power to send it mid, and if your teammate's ready for it, you can maintain that power into the net and really kind of confuse the, the uh, defending team as to how quick the ball is coming, what side of the net it's coming to. So just overall, beautiful play coming out of Lebanon. As with a demo, they're trying to make another play happen here, but great corner save there coming out of... I can barely see who that was because it was pixelated uh, as Lebanon Valley trying to keep the offense going on their side here. Off the backboard and Faithful able to bury it. 90 seconds left to play here. Lebanon Valley up by two. And the LVC crew in chat now got to be loving this. As this time they use the back wall as a pass. We haven't seen that yet. It's typically attack the box. Go across net or across field rather to find an empty place in the net. So that creativity going a long way here as they have to find different ways to attack Hood. They caught on to the early attacks uh, strategy of Lebanon Valley, but they have figured it out since then. And they have been the real challenge on the offensive side, Hood College has not quite been able to, able to figure it out like Lebanon Valley has. And that's what really separates the good teams from the great teams is when you can see that something that you're trying to do isn't working and so you're able to adjust. So Lebanon Valley seeing that, you know, popping across the net was kind of working but not really. So they said, okay, let's try and go off backward now this time and see if we can break that open. And really just looking for where the holes are and eventually you find them and the goals just kind of start coming and coming and coming. Hood College now needs to start doing those same things as they just kind of keep doing that, put it in front of the net, put it in front of the net and hope that somebody's there. Uh, and a lot of the times they're either not fast enough on the rotations or they're too far back to be able to successfully make the challenges. Faithful dropping it down. Oh, Faithful Ooh. was looking for the doomsday. I liked the angle he was looking for there but unfortunately not able to get it so close so you're camping on the back wall of your opponents and uh, with good reason too obviously that challenge prior was what set him up there make the best of a bad positioning uh, and that would allow the, a little bit of an open door here for Hood College with a couple of shots but it's just off the mark and Lebanon Valley allowed the chance to just walk it out with 20 seconds remaining you just got to kill just a little bit more time but slam it gonna pop it high Bichette's going to try to keep it away, play a little bit of monkey in the middle to try to get it away from this Hood College, and I think they've done enough of it. Down to five seconds left, and Bichette's able to get it to Frenchie, and oh they'll end this off with a bang. What a passing play down the field to add insult to injury. It was a beauty. Frenchie showing off the mechanics and the control there. What a redirect, and just fabulous communication from Lebanon Valley there to just kind of be like, hey, Go up for this. Okay, here I go. And with one second left, as you said, taking that three-goal advantage, Lebanon Valley just absolutely putting a chokehold on the momentum going into game three and match point.
They certainly did. They uh, uh, set the pace, the tone all together. And if you think back, Hood College has only had two goals. And when they have been available, it's because Lebanon Valley realized that they were pushing a little bit too far, too far forward. And I think that really bit them uh, earlier in this series. But now they figured that out defensively. They've obviously figured something out uh, on the offense as well, which uh, just needed a tiny adjustment from what they were doing in the first place. I like that they were able to not only change uh, in a way, but also go back to the grassroots of passing um, to in add a little creativity to it. And what do you get? Uh, more scoring opportunities and a 2-0 win here in game number two and a chance to close out in game number three. Now, normally in situations like this, the first words out of my mouth is, oh, the opposing team needs to be faster. That's actually not what I think needs to happen here. I think Hood College actually needs to slow down the overall pace of play. They need to do a lot better job of controlling their clears, you know, maybe just kind of taking the soft touch and looking for the pass instead of just booming it downfield and giving possession right back away. I feel like if they slow things down just a little bit to where they can get a little bit more control. They're going to be much better off here because Lebanon is really just kind of using all the momentum flowing in their favor. So Hood has got to find a way to kill that momentum. I think one of two things need to happen. They either need to score like a kickoff goal in the first 10 seconds here, or they need to really make this first possession last a long, long time. Oh, they got going in the right direction, but that was a set of play to lose that kickoff backwards. The so you can put it in the hands of Bish, and he can do something like this. What a play from him, showing off his mechanics to make it 1-0. Frenchy having the clippable play last game. Bichette's with the beautiful flip reset goal here to start off game three. Lebanon Valley coming out swinging already. They are trying to send Hood College packing early. I don't think that played into your radar of what huh. Hood College needed. <laughs> was, was no, one not of those at all. Starts. As now Lebanon Valley right back at it too. Is Bish able to set this one up? It's oh. on the goal line. This one its way through. And Hood College bending and then now breaking with two quick goals. And Lebanon Valley right where they want him. All caps trying to get in position to make the save, but unfortunately was unable to do so. Frenchie finding the right angle uh, to still just be able to bounce it in. As Lebanon Valley, what is that, 14, 15 seconds into the game finding themselves up 2-0 already. So yeah, this is definitely the exact opposite of what I said needed to happen for Hill College to find success here in game three. Now in the corner, it'll be Bichette's, but he's beaten to it. He naturally left for a Ooh. teammate. Drawn a play here. As you saw, Nader saw it basically cherry picking on the opposite side, the opposite end. That read was available. The quick pivot, the turn, and a great labeled shot top shelf. What a shot. And this all starts off with a fantastic challenge there by all caps, being able to just pinch it off the top of Bichette and get it out to Nader Tot with enough speed uh, that Lebanon Valley wasn't able to catch up to it and then also gave Nader Tot enough power to score as Nader Tot was trying to go for his own redirect goal there as Hood College has made it a one-score game yet again. They are fighting for their postseason lives here. Lebanon Valley up 2-0 in the series, having the chance to get the clean 3-0 sweep. Four minutes left to play here in Hood College. Still, right in this, they just need to get a little bit more offensive pressure going here early. It's that fire that you wanted to see from them earlier in this uh, series that we just had mm -hmm. as they continue to pressure uh, this team here. I think it's a more of a controlled speed. You said maybe speed's not the answer. I think that control speed is, is good, right? You want to be able to collect, but you also want to be able to transition and get a quick pass, a flick, in case that challenge is available for Lebanon. So uh, Hood's doing a great job of that, a recognition. But that being said, the time is going to tick off a lot quicker than you want, especially when you dug uh, yourself a hole early by letting in a couple of early goals. That one's left for faithful. Try to push it down the field where Frenchie, uh, Frenchie was waiting for it. Frenchie going to leave it here as it hits ceiling. Back in the zone for Hood College. He's trying to clear it as well. Could not get to it as that touch will kind of find the far side, but recognized off the bat. And slamming right back towards the back wall, but now Lebanon Valley doing a good job to meet every challenge at its mark. And what a goal. clear there by Lebanon. Oh my goodness. And Faithful just parked in front and waited for it to fall to him. I actually like his decision there because everybody and their mother is going up for the backboard defense here. And Faithful is just like, ah, I'm just going to wait down here and let it kind of come to me. Uh, so great patience there from Faithful. Great volley clear to absolutely send that one into the backboard and set that shot up for himself. Lebanon Valley making it a two-goal game once again with three minutes left. All caps getting a nice 50 there off the kickoff. Yeah. And we'll try to hold on to it as well. Oh, it's left there, though, in the box. A bit loose. And Lebanon Valley try to jump on it. Nader waits back. 
Great patience, great turn as well to trap the zone. A bit of a mystery there. The shot going to go just a little bit wide. It was a tough angle there from Nader Todd, and they'll keep the pressure on for Hood. But you want to be able to label that one, especially with 236, and you're down by two. Baseball trying to collect this one, going off the wall for the redirect, but not able to do so. Just not able to catch back up to speed with the balls. That's going to be a drop down. Faithful looking for it again, but Hood College doing a much better job of keying in on these passing plays that Lebanon are trying to throw together. Nader Todd up, waiting, looking for the redirect. Is he going to get it? No, what a save. What, who was that? Was that Bichette making that save? What a defensive play from Lebanon Valley. Yeah, he was able to hold it off. It sure was him as he put it in. Now, with an opportunity on the offensive side of the ball. And backboard's available, but eventually they do get to it. And Hood College will stay alive, but by the skin of their teeth at this point, as the pressure has mounted. There's Lebanon Valley, another shot. Demo, Frenchy back on it too. From the corner, just ran out of boost. Could not quite get that extra touch across for Hood College. Now they need to win these 50-50s that are in the corner, but they're not able to do that. Frenchy waiting right here in the box, but that one will overshoot his target. But they still keep it in the zone. The third man, it's Faithful, doing a great job to keep them where they are with a great fake, and around they go, Ooh. and Nader Todd able to pull Hood College back within one. Oh my goodness, Nader Todd is just carrying his team on his back here. Great control here to keep it on the ground. Gets the double flick over Bichette and just buries it into the bottom right-hand corner, cutting the lead back to one goal. Under 90 seconds left to play here. Hood College keeping themselves in this, but they are still down. This is still game three. They have got to keep that offensive pressure going if they want to take this to a game four. A challenge they do. Oh, as Bichette's right back to it. Faithful. Holding off, trying to go high, trying to kill time for his team to get back in place as one was demoed off the play. But the 50-50 won by Faithful. Now back up for it. Back wall, trying to tap it down, but a good job in recognition from Hood College on the back wall to challenge it. Now a play available. Cherry picking is slamming. He'll be across for a pass if he can get it there. Faithful awkward. He was there, went right past it, and Faithful oh. right back on it now, but the challenge right back into the box. That was just such incredible positioning there from Faithful. Such a risky play. Ends up paying off for Lebanon as now they're trying to fight here. 30 seconds left in the game. Trying to get this ball out of their half. Bichette with a beautiful 50. Trying to recover. Not quite able to catch up to it. That's going to fall in front. Faithful sending it to the left wing side. Frenchy going to send that one back towards Hood College. And that's just going to go in. Frenchy scoring it from almost their own box. How? Uh, just a pinch, right? So a lot of velocity. Maybe eluded them. Oh, just a missed jump. Oh. And it looked like it was a bit of, of, a, of a touch off the backside of the car when they intended the front side. So a bit of misfortune there for Hood College. So I think we did it again. Oddfellow. He said it was going to be close. Hey. Lebanon Valley just 20 seconds away from ending this in three. Hood College still having 20 seconds left to work with here, though, as that's going to be Nader Tot trying to send that back towards the Lebanon Valley side. Stopped immediately at midfield. Faithful, popping it back, slamming, trying to collect it. Looking for something. All caps putting the shot on, turned away, and bumps his teammate away at the last second. So as the clock ticks down to one bear, it does look like we are going to see Lebanon Valley taking the series. Clean sweep, 3-0. Hood College giving it everything they could, but... And this is one of those times Lebanon Valley just wanted it more. He definitely did. You could feel it too. Uh, Hood College, I mean, they really gave it their all. But unfortunately, it was just the last few minutes or three minutes that they were able to put any kind of pressure on and finally see that fire that was lit under them and, and see them come to life. You can't wait two and a half games in order to start uh, showing up and saying, hey, now we have something to play for. You did the whole time, and unfortunately for them, uh, it, it wasn't going to pay off, right? Maybe you get one and you try for a reverse sweep, but at that point, uh, Lebanon Valley knew the mission. They came in. They uh, accomplished it, and they will be moving on to the semifinals with an impressive work uh, uh, to get everybody involved from the get-go. Their passing was on point, whether it be through the box or using the wall uh, behind the defense. Either way, they were on points. They knew it, and I believe they deserve this win altogether as well. Oh, absolutely. Don't get me wrong. They they did everything possibly in their power to, to earn this win. They earned every ounce of it. But college has some very, very easy mistakes to fix as they go into the end of this season, going into next season. Small things that they can look at as to, okay, what can we do better next time around? Um, and, and it's just little small things. It's the challenges. It's the speed of overall play. It's just... 
you know, it's just, it's wanting it more, you know, like you, you have to play five minutes of Rocket League, not two minutes. And that's what I really feel like we saw out of them is they were kind of just dirtling around for the first couple of minutes of each game. And then finally went like, oh crap, we're losing. We have to actually start playing now uh, and just weren't quite able to catch up at the end. But Great effort from them. Uh, Lebanon Valley, congratulations moving on to the semifinals here. We still have one more matchup left tonight, though, Bear. That's right. Let's take a look at the schedule now and see where we are. One last matchup, like you mentioned. The 830 matchup is going to be NWCJV facing off with BVU. So we head down uh, to the Navigators division where they have something to play for as well. I'm um, excited to see these two in action because, um, you know, they've really packed a punch here. We've shown uh, the fact that, you know, teams that might be, uh, you know, underdogs coming in, they can have all the chances in the world to try to, uh, to pull it off. <clears throat> we're talking about, of course, Illinois Springfield earlier. So, um, loving this, the the fact that we're able to see the Navigators. They push so hard um, all season long and have their chance here um, in just a bit. So, again, that's coming up here um, in, in momentarily. And, of course, we'll be on the call for that one as well. Absolutely. So, we will see you guys on the other side of this break. Stay right there. More NECC Rocket League action coming right at you.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to NECC Rocket League action. Final match of the night. Once again, my name is an odd fellow. Joining me again in the booth is Bear Light. And Bear Light, this is uh, this has an this is an interesting matchup we got coming up here. It definitely is. We head over to the Navigators Division for us. It's the Great Plains area as well. Uh, so we're uh, towards the west a little bit. And uh, with this matchup, it's an interesting one. You're you're right because it's number three versus number six here in Northwestern College facing off with uh, BBU Blue. And so B BBU coming in as the number six seed. But that being said, I do have to tell you there have been a couple things that I've been noticing about the records themselves that may uh, not uh, scream upset, but uh, can kind of hint towards maybe potentially seeing BBU win. Number one uh, is the fact that, you know, when you look at Northwestern College and the fact that they were able to take a game off them uh, early on the season, but also Northwestern College, uh, Hastings White, when they faced off with them, one of the one of the teams that have been struggling this year, they gave it an opportunity and played them super close. This team is vulnerable. Let's go ahead and get into the roster, though, and see who's on this Northwestern College team as it's spread PJ and Potato Chip to round out this roster potato chip coming in as, as a freshman uh in business administration and spanish so uh dual headed in his studies here yeah definitely a good combination of things to be uh there was a point in time where someone would have said that you know chinese is what you would want to learn for business but we're getting to a point where spanish is getting there so excellent yep. choices there from him uh we've got pj the junior with software engineering minoring and business administration and then it's bread coming out as the old head for this team as the senior in business management and finance so once again lots of business folks around here really getting down to business with all these players and god i feel dirty saying that <laughs> no doubt about it uh sure enough they're on the business side let's see if bvu is the same here coming in bvu blue um at, uh, again we have spacey maestro and i i swear i'm gonna mess up his name so many times a for science is how it's pronounced computer science by the way uh which rhymes and also all freshmen i don't know if you noticed that but yes they are all decided on a major which number one is impressive but number two yeah. Um, a young team who is obviously pretty talented, but at the same time looking to find themselves. And it was a difficult time during the season coming in at three and five. They'll look to do so here um, and perhaps uh, cause an upset here in the quarterfinals. Uh, but they got a tough task ahead of them for sure. Yeah, and, and we've got a computer science, math major and business management. So a bunch of smart word i can't say on stream, unfortunately. But if you know, you know, uh, with three <laughs> freshmen like we said, and it's, and it's, it, I always say that, you know, like when it's the, when it's a team of three young kids, you think that it's like, oh, they're going to be more mechanical. They're going to know more what they're doing and blah, 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 blah. I don't necessarily think that's the case because that also means that they haven't necessarily played much together outside of this season. Whereas when you have a team like Northwestern who has a junior and a senior, there's at least a chance that they've got more experience playing with each other, uh, at least, you know, last semester, if not over the summer. Uh, so there could be more experience on the side of Northwestern College, but Buena Vista definitely has an opportunity to make an upset happen here. Well, Northwestern, their fans in chat saying, we don't want to hear that, especially from Bearlight, who is very sure that BBU is going to make it a close one. Do I think they're going to pull, uh, pull off the upset? Well, that's to be determined here as momentarily we have the lobby loading up now. BBU coming in without Twix here, uh, which is also notable as typically Twix has taken the pitch. Game number one between Northwestern, the number three seed, and BBU, the number six seed, is underway. And again, this is Northwestern College, not the other Northwestern that I'm sure you're thinking of, but still Northwestern nonetheless, as it is going to be early offense coming out of Northwestern, but BBU turning that away very, very quickly. Red waiting patiently in the corner, gets a nice save there, able to get up quick enough to keep that from being any kind of dangerous from BVU. But BVU had a chance, but that was going to be Potato Chip getting in the way of that one. Yeah, he was able to get there momentarily and cause enough disruption to keep it out for the time being. Uh, see Meister left in no man's land, kind of between the play here as Northwestern JV trying to jump on it too, but Potato Chip right there at mid to kick it back to one, but PJ couldn't quite control it, so he'll have to go up for it. And use a little bit of that boost that he collected. He'll still have some in the tank, though. He'll need to rotate around because BBU knocking on the doorstep. As it's spread, trying to settle it down. No going to touch to midfield. And Potato Chip to push forward, but it's right in the hands of Space, and he'll start from his own end. As BBU really matching the energy and speed early in this one. Yeah, lots of just really quick back and forths, lots of really just stalled out 50s from both teams. No team has really gotten a solid offensive advantage, which 
it's game one. These guys haven't played each other since week sure. three, so they're kind of feeling each other out a little bit. This is this is not unexpected in the first two minutes of game one, especially. I expect to see the speed and the intensity pick up as this game goes on, and especially as the series goes on, as Potato Chip saving that one off of his own backboard. I think it's gonna be A for Science trying to keep this one in play in the corner, but PJ sending it away. And he's gonna collect as the fan favorite in chat. You can tell PJ very beloved by his esports program and anybody who's uh, been watching and following this team as well as he gets the mark yet again we'll try to collect as after science also trying to challenge there in the corner a touch out but it's going to be challenged by bbu yet again the space is on it and now a bump giving him the business here and trying to uh unlock a little bit of space here in the box as after science again challenging and making it very difficult as bbu has some extended offensive pressure and it's been that way for the first two minutes here. And that physicality starting to come out of uh, BVU is, is, again, something that's not really all that surprising to me because when you get a game that's really stalling out like this, you got to do something different, right? And a lot of times, that's where the physicality comes in. You start going for more bumps. You start going for more demos because if you can't score on them, get them out of the way, and then there's nobody to score on. You just get the open net. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me to see that start to pick up a little bit more. But... Northwestern starting to knock on the door here, but so far the the Buena Vista defense is holding strong as that one got a little bit dangerous, but Maestro able to get that one past one of the Northwestern offensive players and sending it back towards the Northwestern College side of the pitch. Got a little bit too far ahead of it, but did Ooh. a nice job to chip it out the center, but it was potato chip instead. Uh, they found it on the other end. Space as one across, but unfortunately no boost to pursue it and get the pass off, and so it was read all the way by Northwestern JV. Who uh, were only on it temporarily, so possession being given up both ways. We saw a little bit of this in the last series. So a little bit of it again is space. Try to challenge. Unfortunate side flip there. We'll leave it for bread. By Northwestern. Maybe a little bit too patient. Obviously, PJ called him off, but you're getting pretty, uh, pretty close to the box. Potato Chip trying to put that one on as Northwestern is trying to turn this back around. Oh, nice bump. Coming out of BVU there, it's kind of slowing down Bread as he's trying to get offense going. I don't like how bunched up BVU got in the middle of the field there. If there had been anybody open on the left or right side for Northwestern, that could have been a goal, but luckily for them, no one was. As that gets sent back towards their backboard, Maestro looking for it, but that is going to be an offensive player from Northwestern going up early. Potato chip now. Sing it back mid, and that is going to be turned away once again by C. Maestro as the defense for Buena Vista continues to hold strong here, and again, this is just very back and forth between both these teams. Yeah, they collect and they know how to hold on to it, but also when they get to the offensive zone, it looks like a bit of shaking both ways, by the way. Uh, so Buena Vista trying to push it back down the field. They've got midfield. Uh, that's about all they'll get. Wait, chasing around and giving them a lot of spaces northwest, and they trip over each other. An opportunity here for Buena Vista, but the shot not going to be there. Now PJ trying to work in transition, but will be demoed off it by space yet again. But still on it, though. Is Maestro trying to find it across, but target a little bit off the mark here. But if he still allowed the chance to get it out the center field, this should be a touch. He actually played it away from his own man. Still in control, though, as they try to push the corner. But PJ, again, able to get to it. and miss off the corner, though. A chance develops with 10 seconds left. Trying to find that top shelf. The pass across Ooh. and a goal. It's Maestro to make it 1-0. Buena Vista. C. Maestro sneaking his way into the midfield here as A for Science puts a perfect pass off the backboard. One of the two of them was going to get it, and unfortunately, the Northwestern College defense just finally were able, just finally crumbled under the pressure as Buena Vista scores the first goal of the game with just eight seconds left. Now, Northwestern College having five seconds to try and make something happen. PJ playing it off the backboard that's going to bounce. We are now in zero second territory, but Potato Chip. Not able to get the flick on it. He thought he was going to get, and that is going to find grass. And that yeah. was a very close game for Buena Vista to take game one. It sure was. Uh, they were out, they were prepared, and they matched the energy. And when they had an opportunity to strike at the very end, they did. A lot of those went by the wayside a little earlier, uh, but they did take advantage of their late, and that's what matters. And they have that one game in their back pocket. Remember, they were only able to win one out of the entire series last time they met in week three. So it's looking good for them. That being said, PGA kept on the pressure and really tried to uh, create a chance there late, but it was a little bit too late uh, 
to say the least there for Northwestern College. But, again, they'll hop into game two. I'm not too terribly concerned. I'm not tossing red flags up here for Northwestern. Uh, I think that they're going to be able to settle down yet again um, and come back at BVU and say, hey, listen, there's a reason why we're favored in this one. And they need to get in their voice channel and, and really be saying the same things. We know we're capable of beating this team. We've done it once before, and we can get back to it again. It's very possible that they hop out here uh, to even the series at one. One thing that really caught my eye in that game one was both teams were playing very defensively, very conservative in their in their like style. Uh, nobody really trying to overcommit. They both seemed very concerned about getting beat over the top on their offensive possessions. That's why it felt like the offensive possessions on both sides were a little weak uh, for most of the game. So it's going to be interesting to see which team decides to take the risk and go for that first major offensive push in this game two. Is it going to be BBU to try and keep the momentum going in their favor, or is it Northwestern College to try and do something different to not fall to 2-0 and oh and put themselves on an early match point here early as 30 seconds in. We're starting to see the same kind of back and forth going here, although it looks like BBU might have a little bit more speed behind them here. Yeah, and they're looking to turn as well and, and stay in on plays and keep the pressure on whenever they need to. Red had a little bit of space there. It's BJ, the shot with a save. Over the shoulder by space. And now it's a difficult save to make. He's stuck with it. See Maestro trying to send that out of the corner, but it's Bred there waiting for him. Gets boomed away by space over the top of PJ. PJ trying to catch up to it, but does have teammates coming back in support. I wasn't sure if his other teammates were going to be back in time. That thought that might just float on in. One minute gone so far in this game. PJ playing it off the right side wall. Now just going to fire it. I think he might have been looking to send it in, but did send it just wide right. Space. Looking for it. That's going to be C Maestro coming over the top. Good communication from BVU to not double commit on that defensive play. A for Science now. Going to chase this one up to the air. Not quite able to get it over PJ, but C Maestro waiting on the ground. Backboard is going to go just a little bit higher than I think Space was anticipating. And with that wide right there from... It's Brett. Sorry, it took me a minute to read that. My screen's a little pixelated. Uh, that is going to fall wide for Northwestern College. And turning on it is PJ to challenge Maestro here in the corner a couple of times. This is one will bounce away from the wall a little bit dangerously. Maestro did a great job to handle. He's out of boost, though, and Northwestern didn't recognize that. They allowed him the chance to get the 100 boost, and he'll have plenty to work with, too. Chips it past one. Make it two. It's right there in the slot. Ever Science able to tap it away. The solo play in the corner to set him up from Maestro. He's been big in this one. And Buena Vista University keeps the train rolling here as they take the momentum from their last second goal in game one and carry it over to game two and score the first goal of the game with three minutes left to play. Took him a lot less time this time around than it did in game one, I tell you what. Yeah, no doubt. They've been right back at it. They've been very excited. You can tell they were prepping for this quarterfinals match and said, hey, everybody's going to favor Northwestern in this one, but we're going to come out and play with a level of, uh, you know, aggression, a level of controlled uh, hyper play, and it's been working for them so far. And when goals are few and far between, Northwestern's got to find a way to create more chances. And PG's going to do just that with a pass across, so they will even it one as Potato Chips set up nicely there on the doorstep to even the game. And that stonewall defense from BVU just finally falling apart a little bit. It looked like there was a demo that came out on the defensive side there, uh, which opened up that net for Northwestern College to finally get a shot on. And again, I start looking for more physicality to come out of both these teams because they knew from game one how close that was that they were going to have to change something. So whether it's more passing plays or whether it's more physicality, as that was an incredible save there uh, by the BVU defense as Northwestern College is still trying to make some offense go here. But both these teams need to start doing something. Otherwise, it's going to still be an extremely close game. Yeah, very reflective of what we saw in game number one. It continues to be that way too. As Brett will push down the field here, I left in a 1v1, saw that the defense was going to the boost, it will set it in front, and PJ couldn't quite get the shot off the way he wanted to, and they're able to jump on it because of it. It's space, right back out, wasn't able to control the air drag, and so right back at him as Bread looks to challenge here. Good call off there on the defense by Maestro. Tried to get an extra touch to elude PJ, although he was handcuffed, he does have some support on the defensive end. Is pushed out. PJ lost control. Back on it is Bred. He'll find PJ there on the sidewall camping. And it was a one-two punch, but it read out by space. 
Yeah, it was great uh, line of sight there from space to be able to sniff that out and not let that pass develop like it was trying to. Almost looked like it was going to just straight up be a shot on, but uh, the second player snuck himself towards center. But uh, once again, good good eyes there from space to spot that. As PJ trying to push this towards the right wing corner here on the point of his side of the pitch. Space going up to meet him. Neither of them going to touch the ball and Potato Chip going to miss it on the bottom as well. I think he was trying to get a little bit of a volley shot, but wasn't quite able to connect as Space gets a beautiful 50 off the top of Brett. Maestro sending it off the backboard, not able to connect with anything. A for science, not able to get enough power to put a shot on either. 40 seconds left to play in this game, Bear, and we are still neck and neck between both these teams. Continuously back and forth, but a bit of a mistake, a blunder. Uh -oh. And Ace had to get back to it because that had a teammate out. PJ right on it here in the corner. Space able to tap it up. And they will clear to the zone, but then right back at it is Brad. He'll try to set up PJ with this one, but instead will pop it high to the corner, so he'll bounce out knowing he's lacking boost, and PJ calls him off. The shot from an angle, what a Ooh. save! The reaction time there, the follow-up here from Potato. As he tries far side, the tap in unavailable. Back down they come, five seconds remaining. It'll be space here in the corner. It's a tap pass one, Potato Chip going to clear the zone. This should hit ground, it does. And we are in some overtime in game number two. Oh my goodness, A for Science using every ounce of length out of that octane to keep Northwestern College from taking it before overtime. But here we are in game two, going into overtime as PJ is trying to meet this one early, trying to keep it on the BVU side of the pitch. Gets sent back immediately. Looked like there may have been a little bit of an issue there from one of the Northwestern College players, but they got away with something there. Yeah, it sure did. It looked like they let it pass him by, thinking it was going to go well wide, and it was off the post. This one again off the post, and it's Sean Opportunity going to go well high, though, for BVU. They follow up on it, though. Uh -oh. Awkward. They can't get to it. No, Potato Ooh. Chip from the goal line. Able to get it out, and they're in transition now as Potato Chip tries to get to it. Oh my goodness, Buena Vista almost had it there, and they are so lucky that they don't get scored on on the fast break by Northwestern College. Fantastic turnaround speed there by all three players to get back before PJ had a chance to turn that into points. Ooh. But Potato Chip turns that into points as Northwestern College finally is able to score their second goal, taking it in overtime. What a 50 for Potato Chip. Yeah, stuck with it, read the play, and that was 100% intentional. You can see uh, the calculated go in chat, or they should at least, but uh, Northwestern able to pull it off here and even the series. We said they would bounce right back, and it was a little bit more difficult than I had in mind, but uh, they'll take it nonetheless. I mean, in overtime, you stick with it. Uh, if you win 50-50s over and over again, eventually, obviously, it's going to favor you, especially when you're able to read the play like you was in that instance. And it definitely seems like this Buena Vista University is giving Northwestern College a little bit more trouble than they thought they were going to they were getting into coming into this. Um, it's kind of like you were saying, like if you look at the schedules going into this, Buena Vista University isn't far off from potentially being a five seed, maybe a four seed. You know, a couple good more, a couple better wins here and there doesn't necessarily mean that the team is bad. Um, and never mind the fact that their their uh, week eight matchup ended up being a forfeit, anyways. Uh, so there's definitely a lot more skill. Uh, closeness, if that's a word, between both these teams that it looks like on paper. It's definitely coming out on the pitch. This point of Vista University is making Northwestern College work for every ounce of ground here in this matchup. And this is where a good team should be made of, right? It, when a team that's uh, overperforming uh, is kind of getting in your head a little bit, you have to find way to win, uh, find ways to win games, and that's what they've been doing all season long. Uh, you know, they uh, went over, you know, all. There's no coincidence that you're up. Uh, you know, 7-1 on your record. You find ways to win, unique ways to get through. That's what Northwestern's been doing all season long. They do it again in game number two. But we'll have to do it two more against Buena Vista, who has been uh, as hot as they've been all season long. Heading into the playoffs here in the quarterfinals. As oh, sure had an opportunity there, too. If he had the mechanical ability to get a Dempsey dish off, it might have been easy for him. But unfortunately, uh, it was not quite enough, but the chip will go. So Maestro sticks with it, 1-0 BBU. Excellent makeup there from Maestro. It looked like he just flipped the wrong way trying to get that Doomsie, but was able to follow up here. Fantastic floater just right in front of the net. Uh, definitely threw off PJ with how high that was going to go. Uh, so just great job from Maestro to stay in the play, not get too discouraged with missing the first shot and giving Buena Vista another one-goal lead early. However, had the one-goal lead in Game 2, ended up losing it in overtime. So Northwestern College still having plenty of time here as PJ misses another one low. Yeah, not quite been a series yet, but uh, if anybody's going to amp them up, it'll be Chad. <laughs> they love some PJ and Chad here. We'll see if they can. 
It's now space. Challenge on it by Bread. This one will go high off the backboard. Nobody here positionally. In fact, that pop was not intended for space, but luckily he had that support behind him. Well, let's try to take a deep breath. Regain Ooh. themselves, but continuously missing these easy chances. Which you can't be doing against Northwestern. They're definitely going to make you pay at some point. Absolutely. And it's, it's those easy misses, you know, where you, you think the ball is a little lower than it actually is. Or you think you're going up in time, but you're actually going up a little late. It's just the, the small mistakes that you start seeing uh, throughout the course of a series. Uh, and it'll just be interesting to see if BVU is able to, to kind of patch those up as the series goes on. Or if they start to get worse. And if Northwestern College starts to capitalize on it as PJ passes it out mid for Potato Chip. Looking for the drop down and he is going to get it. Great team play there from Northwestern College to tie it up with three and a half left to play. Starts with PJ being a nuisance in that corner. And then when the challenge was there, it was a little low. Looks like they ran out of boost on the defense. Either way, they hit the mark this time around. Northwestern, we've seen miss a couple of those shots earlier in the series. Not that time around. They'll even it at one here. As they'll go right back to work. You see Potato Chip on it. Try to get the demo. We'll get one after he missed the initial one. Would have been a double demo that would have set up things nicely for them. But instead... They'll be in the rotation backwards, says Space. Now holds on to it. It's 100 boost. Looking to flick, but PJ got to him. Beat him to it. And now we'll circle around quickly. They have to go through the box. And now dangerous play. But Meister was forced into it. But BBU going to keep this 1-1 scoreline. I'm really liking the challenge speed that I'm seeing out of Northwestern College here. They're not giving BVU any kind of chance to put any kind of solo plays together. They're not allowing them to get any kind of passes. And that's something that BVU have to kind of start noticing because that also means that Northwestern College is going to get to a point where they may overcommit once or twice. And BVU just has to be vigilant and wait for those opportunities to arise and then seize them when they show up as Potato Chip trying to contest this one in the corner is able to do so in another fantastic 50. It's a third 50 in a row there off of space. Potato Chip doing it all himself, keeping the offensive uh, power in control of Northwestern College. Looking a lot like the early days of Fireburner back when uh, yeah. this was the mechanical uh, level. You know, win 50 after 50, and eventually, you know, the rotations, you can only rotate so many times in a certain amount of time, right? And so, uh, wins back to back to back. As that I shot was on point, but it's going to be defended. PJ already up for this one. Tried to play the 50 as well, but this will be chipped back in to the zone for BBU. God, I wish I could have the days back when uh, being a uh, when being a 50 god was all you really needed to be <laughs> to be good at Rocket League. You take away all these flip resets and everything. I'm sick of it. Exactly. Those were the days that I could actually thrive in, you know? The shot on, yeah, right? though. Oh, what a Ooh. save. He got back to that one. PJ, the follow-up, though, and another one. Anticipation from Buena Vista here on the defensive side has been impressive. Yeah, absolutely. And Northwestern College has just been peppering everything they can, but it feels like Buena Vista has been seeing everything before it even happens. And uh, Northwestern College just has to keep the shots coming on as Potato Chip does so there. Fantastic shot from him being able to control that score himself, bottom left corner. Yeah, a bit of a mechanical mistake there on the defense of BBU. They've been so great, but eventually they're playing a bin don't break. But over and over again, eventually it is going to break through. Northwestern up 2-1. 116 left on the clock. Winner will go to match point. And right now, Northwestern looking to live up to the potential that they do have here. Another shot will be on. Another save made. PJ, beat to it. We'll leave it for Potato Chip. So no real harm done at center field. The pop will go over one, and PJ trying to challenge, but he's a little bit too late on it. Now they're back on it. It's Fred, able to shield it on the wall. It's gonna go off back wall. Potato Chip can't Ooh. get to it. Meister was there, but he side flipped. Now he tries to deflect it. Great redirect, and now already upward in space. He'll fake him out, and it's gonna bounce towards net, and Meister to tap it in. I guess the uh, weapon of confusion was their choice here, and it worked regardless, and we're tied it to you. Yeah, so it's actually going to be PJ that taps this in. Ace uh, fakes it, and then oh, PJ ends true. up with the unfortunate own goal, which gets credited to Maestro. So with the own goal there, we're going to see a tie game now with 39 seconds left to play. The chat favorite just scored on his own net. How are we feeling about that? Can't be feeling too good. I'm not feeling good about calling him Maestro. Showed up on the screen as such, but <laughs> regardless, we move on. We digress. 2-2. Two -two. We digress. The scoreline. Off back wall it goes. Northwestern. And now another shot. Oh. Obviously, they weren't lingering on it too long. It's Brett right back at it. It was just 21 seconds to go. They're back on top. 
And if you're Northwestern College, this is exactly what you need. You have such, you give up such an unfortunate goal just 10 seconds ago, and then you're able to turn right around and get that one goal lead back. That's how you really see which teams want it the most and which teams are really kind of holding up the mental fortitude to stay in it and, and keep putting their all into every single possession as Potato Chip tried to put another shot on there. 13 seconds left. Nice 50, but it does kind of go the way of Buena Vista. Northwestern College just opting to kind of let it roll around here, trying to eat up as much time as possible. PJ looking for the pass down to Potato Chip. Potato Chip does get contested. One second left on the clock. This is still going to be in the air. That's going to be space, putting it towards the corner. Still going to be airborne here. Potato Chip might have a chance to put a set final goal on, but no. And it does get away from all six players. Finds grass, and Northwestern will be going to match point here, Bear. Yeah, the R2 in a row, and this seems to be exactly what happened in week three as well, and we see a little bit of that sneak peek here. Um, that being said, you got to give all the credit in the world to Buena Vista, who's been hanging around in every single game. Like you mentioned, they're putting their heart into everything uh, this series, and so a lot of times that'll yield results uh, it, just by that alone. But Northwestern been just a little bit better overall. Um, I, I still see them with a clear advantage here moving forward. I think they do close out here based on what I've seen so far in the series. Um, obviously, I said a chance for an upset for BVU. They have that heart so that you can tell they're well coached. Um, but that being said, they're going to have to close out one of these close games. And if the shot count is that in favor of Northwestern uh, College, well, it's going to be a Northwestern win. They have to do something to limit the chances that Northwestern College have had. Well, and I, I wouldn't count I wouldn't count BVU out just yet because their defense has been stellar. The only time they've really sure. been scored on is when there's been blatant, obvious mistakes, like getting stacked on top of each other or just whiffing a, a ball right in front of the net. So if they can cut down on those mistakes, don't be surprised if BVU actually end up taking this to Game 5. It's definitely a possibility. For me, I, I agree with you because, you know, they have to take that first step first. But I think they have the chance. And that's a good start, right? C Maestro able to jump out, give them a 1 0 lead here. As Space just popped it high, BJ in the back of the net versus uh, being up top and, and being allowed the chance to challenge out where he wanted to go. Just a missed challenge overall and BBU up top. And this is where a team like BVU is going to shine. At this point in the series, they've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. You know, if they lose, they lose anyway, and they were the bottom seed coming into it. No one really expected them to win. But if they win, you know, it's this that much better. So a lot of the pressure, I feel like, is really on Northwestern here to close this out. And I almost feel like BVU is playing with not much pressure. Twix coming in there with an incredible save. Yeah, he was able to get there a lot quicker than I anticipated. Quick really change. In that instance, BJ right back on it though. We'll try to hop off the sidewall, but couldn't quite read it correctly. Trying to hold it off here in the corners. BBU, they look to push out. A couple of touches to one another. A little crafty touches. And this one will pop out the center. Big chance here for space. He's got room to work with, but the flick couldn't quite get it off in time as the challenge was coming from NWC. But they can't get it out. Now BJ was struggling with that one too. Bit of a miscommunication between him and Brad and almost led to another BBU goal. BBU trying to keep this one going. Brad not quite getting the 50 that he wanted as Potato Chip is getting back. PJ able to get it in, just barely beating the shot to the defender. Is that's going to be PJ tying it up now at one apiece here in game three? Or what game looks like this? <laughs> in game number four. Listen, I had one earlier. It's okay. <laughs> 1-1 <laughs> one, one nonetheless, it's a tie game. As Northwestern, do you get one back? You saw Twix kind of you know, trip over himself on the defense, so the fact he's subbed in, he's just trying to find his wheels at this point. Look to contribute in any kind of way he can. But Red, trying to take shots for NWC. Make it difficult for them defensively. They have been popping off, but PJ, that was a good pass, but Potato Chip couldn't find the angle as he's a little bit too far forward in the center, but a demo frees up space. PJ the turn. Good job from Twix to read it. Get out and make the challenge. But the follow-up shot as well, and it does sneak Whoa. through. Potato Chip able to make it to one, and that is just finding the only spot it could go to get a goal there. 
Well, and this defense for Buena Vista has been so solid all series, and it just finally looks like that, the, that uh, Northwestern College is finding the openings in those defense. And again, huge decision to sub in uh, Twix on the side of Northwestern between games. You'd think if any team was going to make a substitution, it might have been BBU, but Northwestern saying, hey, you know, we're going to give Twix a chance to close this out and see if he's able to do it. Uh, so, you know, kudos to them for doing that. Let's see how quickly it takes for Twix to get back caught up to speed with the rest of the series. And I'll pop into the zone here. We'll leave it for PJ. The shot, he didn't connect. Now it'll roll up side wall. And they don't have to rush this. They have possession. They have 234 on the clock. And they have a mistouch again from PJ. As Twix tries to play it across the space, but it is met the other way in transition. But they do get across again. What a challenge. And I just realized, I, I, I need to apologize for this. I just realized, I said that Twix subbed in for Northwestern. That is not the case. He subbed in for BBU. So I apologize uh, to anybody who might be yelling at me in chat. Uh, I can't read. Uh, so that being said, uh, Potato Chip now trying to drive this one up the right side. Northwestern sitting pretty with a one goal lead here. Two minutes left to go. That's going to fall in front, and it's going to go in again. BBU once again caught slacking on defense and not able to catch up to the goal. So that's going to be 3-1 now in favor of Northwestern College. Just not able to get back to it, but you're out of position in the first place. you got to give yourself the best chance, and you have to rotate out when you see that the play is developing towards a favorable Northwestern College possession there. So now 3-1 with two minutes left. BJ going to challenge this and push it forward again. Quicks couldn't get the touch. It's left back. As Space now will try to do something with it, he couldn't. Now up for it is Bred. Maestro able to get a touch. And Maestro's been trying to do everything for PVU, just looking for any kind of support, and it just hasn't quite been there yet for them. Luckily for him, they've got a little bit of time left. Maestro trying to make a push. BVU having to do something, and he is able to get the flick goal. What a shot coming out of C. Maestro. 90 seconds left to play. And Buena Vista University cuts it down to a one-goal lead. Ooh. What a, what a flick, perfect time to bump it up and over the defender. Your Northwestern College defense, you want to be able to read that, get a touch early. You're a little bit too far back in net, and good teams will expose you. So listen, BBU has shown that they can be that top team. They want to keep their chances alive here for sure. The regular season record didn't quite put them where they wanted. The matchup not as favorable as they would have liked. They try to keep themselves alive. Here's Twix. The touch back down to himself. Has enough boost to win the 50-50 on PJ. Now Space is up for this one. Gets that extra touch and will force two oh. members of the defense in a double commit for Northwestern College. And will look to turn and try to expose it. Space back to the center, but cleared out. Big clear for Northwestern. And now PJ to follow that up again. But it does fall in the hands of Space, who is 50 on it again. Northwestern killing lots of precious time needed for BBU. And that last offensive push for BVU is why boost management is so important. If Space has 15 more boosts there, he might be able to catch up to it, get the flip reset, get a fake. He, he's got so many more options other than just sitting there and watching the ball fall in front of the net and not being able to do anything. Uh, so just really showing the importance of the boost management game here in this matchup as, ooh, it's bread. Getting away with one there. Ended up missing his touch, but it went wide right anyways as PJ sends it back towards the corner. 15 seconds left here. Buena Vista knocking on the door. Are they going to be able to break it down as they are trying to stay alive here in this series? One goal has the chance to send us oh. overtime, and that may have been it, but PJ putting everything he had in front of it, saving that one away, and Twix not able to catch it. Northwestern College are going to take the series 3-1. <laughs> Repeat week three? <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be that way, doesn't it? And for Northwestern, this was a challenge. Way more of a challenge than you would have thought walking in and looking at the records alone. The numbers was screaming that Northwestern should have ran away with this one. I mean, technically, they won by two games. But every game was close. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, all but one game here uh, was just one goal games. So they were super close. Buena Vista kept it close. Um, but overall, just weren't able to pull it off. You could tell they had the hearts. Um, they just didn't quite have the mechanics. It was pretty even to that degree, though, I would say. Uh, but overall, they just couldn't quite keep the pace. And and their defense is stellar as it was. You can't just continuously rely on it. They had to find ways to get out. They just couldn't. Yeah, and this this series is a perfect example of one of those where the, the series 
record does not tell the full story like northwestern yeah. college getting the 3-1 dub here the first game was won by buena vista off a off a goal with six seconds left to go and then two games later we were in overtime again the only game that was really a blowout i guess if you could call it that a, a more than one goal differential was game two and yep. that was what really kind of started the ball rolling for northwestern uh but this was so so close and and again you know i said it earlier in in the uh earlier in the stream when i was talking about um one of the other schools that uh, i was casting over if you're later in the bracket and you have northwestern watch this game you know because this shows where some of the weaknesses are and if you're northwestern watch this game and find where those weaknesses are and fix them like because this this definitely was a losable series for northwestern but they were able to hold out on top yeah luckily for them they were able to piece it together and, and really uh, push through, which is at the end of the day, all you need to do and push into semifinals. You know, sometimes you, they won't ask you at the end of the day, whenever you're sitting there in the championship, you talk about the finals. It's not how, or it's not how you won them. It's whether you did and how you, uh, and, and the fact that you're there now and you have to take advantage of it. There are holes in Northwestern college's game. They do look a little bit strong though, uh, pulling through. So they'll try to ride that momentum into the next round. But yeah, you're right. There was a uh, little holes in the game. They'll look to patch up as well. You know, they're not done working because uh, again, they were able to go seven and one. So they continue to look to roll through. Um, and I'm impressed by Buena Vista. I'm excited to see them come in next uh, uh, next semester here with us at NECC and see if they can make a bigger push. Because I think this team was underrated uh, over all season long. And unfortunately uh, for them, their season ends a little bit early. Yeah, absolutely. And and the entire roster is freshmen except for one sophomore in Twix. So right. if this if these guys just stay together and run it back again next year, do not be surprised uh if you see this Buena Vista University really running through the Navigators Conference or, or the Navigators Division next season. Uh but yeah, if you're a team on the other side of the bracket from Northwestern, watch out cuz these guys are definitely coming with a vengeance. Uh they're definitely not going to take anybody else for granted again after this, but they're not invincible. Well, we want to thank everybody for tuning in as well. It is the end of the broadcast, unfortunately, for us. But we love seeing you in chat and your ability. I do have to leave you with this. We got to see PJ play. We love PJ just as much as you love PJ. And we'll be seeing more PJ when it comes to next round. So, chat, don't worry. We got you. Also, it's been an odd fellow uh, joining me, Bear Light, here uh, for the NECC2 channel here on Twitch. And we will see you next time on NECC. Take care.